The Panthers battle for a playoff spot. A live report following the Tiger game. The presentation of ABC Sports. This year, from Sarajevo, Yugoslavia, to Los Angeles, California, the ABC Olympic tradition continues. ABC Sports presents Monday Night Baseball. Tonight, from Tiger Stadium, it's the New York Yankees against the Detroit Tigers. Dave Winfield leading the Yank attack, hitting 336. Alan Trammell, the sensational shortstop for the Tigers, who lead the East by six. Warm, muggy night in Detroit. Again, the Tigers on Monday Night Baseball. Dave Bergman hit that dramatic home run two weeks ago to get this series started. And then we watched Detroit beat Toronto again last Monday, and the Tigers have been hot. They have won 8 of 11. They should go over the million mark in home attendance by Thursday. Good crowd looking on tonight as the Yankees come to town. Hello again, everyone. I'm Al Michaels, and tonight in Tiger Stadium, the Yankees will be taking on Detroit for the first time this season. The Tigers got off to the best start in the history of baseball, at least through 40 games. As you know, they were 35 and 5, and they did most of the damage against the Western Division teams. And the skeptics said, well, wait, do they face the tougher teams in the Eastern Division, in particular Baltimore and Toronto? Well, Detroit, over the past two weeks, has played mainly Baltimore and Toronto, and they've done quite nicely, thank you, as Sparky Anderson likes to point out. They've just taken two weeks off the schedule, and they still have a pretty sizable lead at this point. Six games over Toronto with Baltimore 11 and a half back. The Yankees, meanwhile, got off to a dastardly start. They fell well behind very early, have been playing a little bit better of late, but still 19 back in the middle of June. A long way to go. It would take a miracle for New York to win it. Let me turn to Jim Palmer and ask you about the talent on this Yankee team. A lot of people seem to feel it's a better team than they've shown. Others say, well, maybe uh, they just don't have that talent. They're not as good as Baltimore, Toronto, or Detroit. How do you assess their talent vis-a-vis -vis those three teams? Well, I don't think they rate with the other three teams that you mentioned. Uh, Toronto and the Tigers and Baltimore, in my estimation, are the best three teams in baseball. The Yankees, unfortunately, are in the same division. Uh, the problem with the Yankees, of course, is they started off very poor offensively in their first 38 games. They were shut out 10 times. Their pitching staff is in total disarray. Um, they only have two reliable starters. Uh, Goose Gossage was lost to free agency, went to San Diego, and Dave Rigetti, who has done a good job, uh, is now on the disabled list with a cut index finger. Uh, and then if you couple that with the fact that uh, defensively they're the worst team in the American League, you have a lot of problems. They're a better team than they've been playing, and as you said, they've been hot lately. But uh, I expect them to improve, but I'm not sure if they can be a contender. Two reliable starters have been Phil Necro and Ron Guidry, and we'll see Necro seeking his 10th win tonight. What would a season in New York be without a manager controversy? And no doubt people are speculating that Yogi Berra will be gone. No doubt somebody will write this week that Earl Weaver will take over. He will refute it, no doubt. But let me ask you, when are you going to take the job? I'm not going to take the job. I'm going to be in the booth all year. So there is no chance you'll be the manager of the Yankees before the end of this season. What about somebody else, though, in your estimation? Well, there's been two names mentioned, and one of the reasons for the speculation is the fact that uh, for the last six years, the Yankees have changed managers in midseason. Billy Martin's name has been mentioned, and Billy managed the club last year, won 91 ball games, so naturally his name's going to come up. A new name that hit the papers this week was Lou Pinella when he retired, but I don't think it would be smart for Lou to take uh, a club like this in the middle of the year. I think he might be being groomed uh, to see what happens, observe what happens, see what holes need to be filled, and I think he might be under consideration for the job next year. I think this is a better team than they've shown to this point? They're a much better team than they showed at this point, but they have to go out on the field and prove it. And like Jim said, I don't think that they can win enough games to become a contender this year. All right, last week we started a feature, Earl Weaver on baseball. We'll continue this week as Earl looks at one of his favorite subjects, the subject of our hitting. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Wagner, the right tool for painting. And by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade is thirsty for that deep down body thirst. Right now, your body's thirsty for more than water. You're working your body till you can't do more. Gatorade is thirsty. So give your body what it's thirsty for. Gatorade is thirsty for that deep down body thirst. When you exercise, you lose fluids and minerals. Gatorade puts them back fast. It's no ordinary thirst quencher. It's Thursday. Gatorade is thirsty for that deep down body thirst. 17 hours, 
that's how long it took us to paint this house with a brush. Then we painted it in just six and a half hours with a Wagner power paint. This wicker chair took over an hour, but less than five minutes with a Wagner power painter. A shutter that took 20 minutes, a power painter finished in only three. It's a tool so versatile, it has a flexible spray tip and a way to draw paint right from a can. A Wagner power painter. It's the right tool for painting. When a baseball fan comes out to the ballpark and spends his hard-earned money, he wants to see all facets of the game if he possibly can. The pitcher's duel, the stolen base, the triple in the gap, the great defensive play by the shortstop or the center fielder, possibly the squeeze bunt to win a ball game. But the most exciting thing in baseball, the thing that brings the fans to their feet, is when that home run hitter comes up to the plate with the game on the line and puts it into the seats. It takes four ingredients to build a championship club. It takes good pitching, good defense, certain amount of speed, and it takes power. To me, power is the most important of all. We can go back and look at the 27 Yankees with Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig. These two players led an attack that many people believe was the most powerful ever in baseball history. I'd have liked to manage those guys. Roger Maris joined Mickey Mantle and the Yankees in 1960, adding more punch to an already potent lineup. In 1961, the Yankees hit a major league record 240 home runs. Mantle had 54, and Maris had a record setting 61 homers for a team that won 109 games in the World Series. In the early 70s, the Oakland A's featured great power and pitching. Young Reggie Jackson sparked a team that won three consecutive world championships from 1972 to 1974. What a manager's dream to put names like Johnny Bench, Tony Perez, and George Foster on your lineup card every night. That's why the Big Red Machine won their division six out of 10 years in the 70s. In the last 25 years, only three teams made it to the World Series without power. In each case, they were exceptional in the other categories. The 1959 Go-Go White Sox led the league in stolen bases, and their go-get-em style was good enough to win the American League. The Los Angeles Dodgers of the mid-60s were known for their lack of power, but were better known for their tremendous pitching. Sandy Koufax, Don Drysdale, and Ron Paranowski. They won the World Series in 1965. Two years ago, the St. Louis Cardinals, like the White Sox in 59 and the 65 Dodgers, finished last in the majors in home runs. However, their good pitching and exceptional team speed was well suited to today's artificial surfaces, and the Cardinals won the World Series. A year before the Cardinals, the Oakland A's famous Billy Ball team was nationally known for their speed and finesse, but I'm sure Billy himself will tell you that they led the major leagues in home runs, and that helped them get to the championship series. The bun will always be a big part of the game, but for me, I'd rather see the ball go out to park. My philosophy was to win with the three-run homer. I did have two Baltimore Orioles teams, 1973-1974, that won their division with speed, but the Baltimore Oriole teams that I managed from 1969 through 1971 and 1979 all went to the World Series with a powerful attack. Guys like Frank Robinson and Vogue Powell can change the complexion of a game with one swing of the bat. Those guys made it real easy to manage. And Brooks Robinson could do the same thing when he wasn't out there at third base making great plays like this. By now, it shouldn't surprise you to know that last year's world champion Orioles led the major leagues in home runs. Take a look at the division leaders this season, and you'll see all the leaders are at or near the top of their league in home runs. No matter who the names are on the lineup card, the principle is the same. Good pitching, speed, and defense, but you've got to have power. You think I'm tough? This is tough. TR3. Ain't no wax. Man, this stuff is something else. TR3. Goes on easy, stays on hard. Makes your car beautiful. Like me. TR3 fights off the enemies like dirt, sun, and grime. You want tough? This is tough. TR3. Take it from me, Mr. T. <sighs> Say goodbye to America's favorite can of motor oil. That Quaker State quality America has trusted for over 70 years now comes exclusively in this unique, easy-to-pour plastic bottle made to cost you nothing extra. So long, spouts. See you, dirty hands. Goodbye, oily rags. No more leaky cans. Get Quaker State's pen-grade protection 
and no mess, easy to open, pour, and reseal. Today, you need an oil this good in a package this good. As we get set for the Yanks and the Tigers, earlier today, the U.S. Open golf playoff was held in Mamaronak, New York. Fuzzy Zeller, as you know, tied with Greg Norman after a 72-hole play yesterday. Zeller won by eight strokes. Trouble started for Norman on the second hole today. To detail it, Jim McKay. Well, the troubles of Greg Norman actually began in the second hole. After each man had birdied the first, he put his tee shot here, and he had no shot to the green. Because of those trees, he had a layup. And that's what he did, very intelligently, with a long way to go in this playoff. We had expected a classic confrontation after the spirited play and determination of yesterday. There was Norman, and here was his third shot. Now, Zeller was already on the green, albeit about, well, they later measured it and said he was 68 feet from the flagstick. Here was Greg Norman's shot, long, and he'd need that for the par four. So it looked like he would lose a stroke unless Fuzzy Zeller might three-putt from a long distance like this. Look how far that putt was. Well, he didn't three-putt. As a matter of fact, he didn't two-putt. He dropped it in the hole. A putt longer than the one that Norman had made on 18 yesterday. And Zeller had thrown down the first challenge. Over to you. And here is where Greg Norman admitted later he made a thinking mistake. He charged the cup downhill, trying to save a stroke. Instead of which, he pushed it that far past. Now, instead of having a tap in for a bogey five, as Fuzzy enjoyed his birdie, he had a tough one for the bogey five, which he didn't make. A six to three for Zeller, and there was a three-stroke swing between them. That early on the second hole. If ever a championship was decided on the second hole, I think this was it, because it set the tone. From there on, it was Fuzzy Zeller all the way. And when they asked him at the end, what would you like on the trophy? Frank Urban Zeller, your name, or Fuzzy? He said, make it fuzzy. It's got to be the only fuzzy on there. And here at Tiger Stadium, the Yankees coming in to face the Detroit Tigers, who lead the American League East. The man they're calling Father Time, Phil Necro, 9 and 3, 177 ERA against the veteran right-hander Milt Wilcox on the mound for the Detroit Tigers. We'll be right back. And ABC News Brief brought to you by Budweiser Beer. Now from Washington, Ted Koppel. Good evening. Speaking at a U.N. conference on South Africa, Jesse Jackson today strongly criticized American foreign policy, saying four million Israelis receive more American aid than half a billion Africans. And Jackson said Africa must be placed on the front burner of America's agenda. Walter Mondale has announced he'll hold his first vice presidential interview with Los Angeles Mayor Tom Bradley this Thursday. An international controversy has erupted over the death of two wealthy Americans and the two frozen embryos from the couple now being held in an Australian hospital. Tonight on Nightline, the world's first test tube orphans will examine the legal and ethical issues. Now this. This buds for everyone who scrapes it, sprays it, and lays it on smooth. For all you do, this buds for you. That's News Brief. More news later on this ABC station. She's sexy. She's unpredictable. She's Delia. She's back on Ryan's Hope. There's a new gasoline that will eliminate knocking in virtually every car on the road. And it's coming. It's a gasoline that will help get top performance out of your car. And it's coming. It's the highest octane sold by any major oil company in America. And it's coming. But it's not coming from Amoco or Shell or Mobile or Marathon. It's coming from Sunoco. New 93.5 Ultra. The ultimate in octane. And you can get it now. One of the new owners of Eastern Airlines. Last time you made connections at St. Louis Airport, how much room did you have? This much, this much, this much. Well, my airline, Eastern, can fly you to my city, Kansas City, where you can stroll from one Eastern flight to another. No crowds, no long hikes, no hassles. So make your connections in Kansas City and give yourself a little elbow room. Flying west, fly Eastern to Kansas City and avoid St. Louis. At Eastern, we earn our wings every day. City of Detroit getting ready for the Grand Prix. One of our stories, after the Tigers. Monday Night Baseball. Tonight, the New York Yankees against the Detroit Tigers is being brought to you by... 
Stroh's and Strolite Fire Brew for smooth taste. By Chevrolet with the performance, the style, the innovation, the quality, and the value that make up today's Chevrolet. By Coachman Recreational Vehicles, leader to the outdoors. And by Mr. Goodwrench and General Motors Parts. Al Michaels along with Jim Palmer and Earl Weaver at Tiger Stadium in Detroit with the matchup tonight is Phil Necro for the Yankees and Milt Wilcox on the mound for Detroit. And the Tigers, if you haven't noticed, are minus the services at least temporarily of their ace, right-hander Jack Morris, the winningest pitcher in the league, has missed at least one start, Jim, and uh, we don't know when he'll be back again. They're hopeful by the weekend or perhaps by even Thursday night. But what would the loss of Jack Morris for a while mean to this team? Well, it, it, I don't think it's going to be devastating because they have a good pitching staff. Uh, Dan Petrie's done a fine job. The guy we're going to be seeing tonight, Milt Wilcox, has been struggling over his last five games. But over the course of the last six seasons, he's pitched pretty well for him. Uh, if they would miss Morris for a month or so, it would really cause some problems. But they have a great offense. They have a deep pitching staff as far as uh, the acquisition of Willie Hernandez and, of course, Aurelio Lopez, who's done a fine job in the bullpen. So it's not like they don't have pitchers to take Jack Morris's place. If they miss Morris for a month or so, you may get a call from Sparky. <laughs> well, I hope so. <laughs> Would you take it? I mean, would you accept a I'd spot say, on this rotation? Uh, if, it was, uh, if it reversed the charges, I might have to think about it. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. Meanwhile, let's talk about Phil Necro with Earl Weaver and a man who was given up on by the Atlanta Braves. He had only pitched for the Braves during his major league career, resurrected at the age of 45, and he looks as good now as he ever has. Well, I think there's one thing that's helping him. I think the American League hitters, first time around, since they hadn't seen Necro, are chasing that knuckleball on the first pitch. And tonight, I'm looking to see if Sparky Anderson puts the take on. Maybe the hitters can work the count to 1-0, and 2-0, oh, oh, get themselves a fastball or a slider to hit. Because last year, uh, Necro walked five point something men per ball game, and this year he's only walking two men per nine innings. That's the matchup tonight. Necro takes on Wilcox, the Yankees, and the Tigers coming up from Detroit. This bartender's next big league pitcher. And loves to serve fire brewed strobes. See what I mean? That was his fastball. That was the curve. <laughs> Look out. Wild pitch. What was that? Relief pitcher. Strohs and Stroh Light Fire Brewed for smoother taste. This is today's Chevrolet. Make your move to Chevrolet's new celebrity. Move into more. Move into the comfort of more passenger room than 101 out of 106 import cars. Move into celebrity and attraction of front drive. Move into more. Celebrity. No other new car gives you this much passenger room at a price this low. Celebrity. More to move you. That's today's Chevrolet. People tend to confuse me with the roles I play, which is ridiculous, because I'm not a neat freak. For example, I just got a beta zoom copier from Inalta, but not because I can add toner without getting that disgusting black powder all over my hands. No, I got a Minolta beta zoom because it takes this mess of different size originals and gives back copies in one neat size, automatically. But that doesn't make me a neat freak. Of course, I'm not a slob either, like uh, the beta zoom copiers, only from the mind of Minolta. The World Series, where a pitch is not just a pitch, it's a World Series pitch. Where a hit is not just a hit, it's a World Series hit. A win is not just a win, it's a World Series win. Now you've got a chance to win a trip to the 1984 World Series by entering Major League Baseball's Grand Slam sweepstakes at all Major League ballparks and participating retailers. Baseball fever, catch it. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Yankee lineup tonight has Willie Randolph leading off at second base, and then Butch Weiniger, who's been very hot, does the catching and bats second. Don Mattingly is the league's leading hitter. He'll hit third, and the designated hitter is the right-hand batting Don Baylor, with Dave Winfield, who's been hot in right field batting fifth. Steve Kemp's had a good June. He's in left field, the number six hitter. The switch hitting Roy Smalley is the third baseman. Ken Griffey has dropped down into the eighth spot in the lineup. And the recently recalled Bobby Meacham is the shortstop batting ninth. 
And for the Detroit Tigers, as they get set to take the field, they'll get a nice ovation from a good crowd at Tiger Stadium. It rained this afternoon. We had a couple of uh, showers in the middle part of the afternoon, and then uh, after we arrived at the ballpark, it began to rain. The field was covered, so neither team was able to take batting practice or infield. As you look at the Detroit Tigers, who have to be very, very pleased the way things have gone, because we were here two weeks ago early, they knew they had a tough stretch ahead as you look at Tiger Stadium 365 to left center and 375 are the salient figures the dimensions to the power rallies and the Tigers Earl have to be quite pleased the way things have gone well it was a good road trip for him and like Sparky said two weeks off the schedule maintain the lead six games over Toronto so they're riding high right now eight of their last 11 including a weekend sweep over the struggling Milwaukee Brewers. Defensively, they have Dave Bergman at first base with Darrell Evans as the DH tonight, and they are very strong up the middle with Lou Whitaker, the Gold Glove second baseman, and Alan Trammell, who's been in a slump at the plate, but still doing very well in the field, as always, the shortstop. At third base, they're going with Barbaro Garbay because Sparky feels that he hits breaking balls well, and thus he'd have a better shot than Howard Johnson at Necro's Knuckler. That's Sparky's logic. Larry Herndon has really been struggling this season, but he gets the start in left field. He's trying to get on track. And center field is Chet Lemon, who is the leading bulk getter amongst American League outfielders for the All-Star team. We could very well see him in the lineup at Candlestick on July 10th. And Kirk Gibson is in right field. He's lifted his average to 276. Back of the plate is Lance Parrish, who has the build of Arnold Schwarzenegger. And on the mound is Milt Wilcox, who is 34 years old, born in Honolulu, but moved to the mainland when he was very young. Started his career in the big leagues with Cincinnati in 1970 when Sparky Anderson was there. Then he moved to Cleveland, briefly to the Cubs, and came to the Tigers in 1977. The umpires tonight, John Hirschbeck is back of the plate with Steve Palermo at first, Dave Phillips at second, and Jerry Newdecker at third. And Jim, you've had numerous chances in your career to watch Wilcox pitch. What about him? Well, he's not overpowering, Al. He, he's been struggling in his last 24 innings. He's given up 19 runs after starting off the season 6-0. and I think that what that illustrates is that he's certainly doesn't have a lot of confidence uh, the club was playing so well the Tigers of course as we've talked got off to a 35 and 5 start the last couple of weeks even though uh, they are hot after sweeping the Brewers this last weekend they have been struggling a little bit and really depends on how well he pitches tonight whether they're going to win or not the Yankees as we said are also hitting well and you have a guy here Willie Randolph one of the excellent leadoff hitters in the game Willie Randolph is 15 for his last 30 and he takes the strike Willie likes to look for that fastball on the first pitch, and Wilcox got a good-looking curveball over to him. Randolph had a home run in the 10th inning of Fenway the other night. That was the wild one that the Yankees pulled out, 12 to 11. One ball, one strike. Willie's lifted his average with this recent surge up over the 300 mark at 307 with two homers, 10 RBIs. And of course, the most important thing for a leadoff batter is he's walked 38 times. He has an on-base percentage of right around 40 percent and that's what you want a leadoff guy to do for your ball game. broken bat looper into left field for a base hit and it's the old adage when you're hot you're hot when you're 15 for 30 you break your bat you still get a base hit get a good breaking ball good curveball on the outside half of the plate and hit him right on the end of the bat now Butch Weiniger who comes up with the longest current hitting streak in the big leagues 15 games that's the longest of his career and he's hit 377 over that stretch. Yankees moved him into that number two spot, which is somewhat unusual for a catcher. You don't see very many catchers hitting there. The Weiniger did hit second on occasion with the Minnesota Twins. He's the type of hitter you would want to hit second. Now, of course, you have the situation where Randolph's being held at first base by Dave Bergman. You have that hole. He can pull the ball. I felt when he came up, he did a lot more home runs than he has. Want to know the count. They talked about Weiniger in the same breath with Johnny Bench when he first came up. He doesn't have Bench's power. But the one thing that uh, Butch Weiniger does make you do as a pitcher is throw strikes. He can walk. He has a good eye. Doesn't hit, as we said, for many home runs. And there you saw Wilcox's move. He has one of the better pitching moves. I wouldn't really call it a balk move, but 
He has a quick jump and, and it's hard to get a, a, a particularly good lead off Wilcox. Randolph bluffs going and the pitch is outside. The Yankees do very little running. Randolph with five steals this season. Their leading base dealer would be Omar Moreno, who's playing part time. He has seven. And the Yankees, as a team, have only 22 more than a third of the way into the season. Randolph is going, and Weiniger lines it to center field. Lemon is racing back, gets there, and makes the catch. Wheels and fires, and Bergman has to come up the line to take the throw as Randolph gets back. Weiniger hit that ball real well. How many balls are going to get over Chet Lemon's head? He goes back very well. Well, Chet Lemon is the type of outfielder that uh, you watch the pitcher throw the ball to home plate. The hitter gets good wood on it, and by the time you look up, Lemon's in full stride after that baseball. And you're right, it takes a lot to hit one over his head. And you got a lot of room here, too. 440, the straightaway center. Now Don Mattingly, an emerging star. Mattingly, last year, was called up by the Yankees. <clears throat> from Columbus the day Bobby Mercer retired. He'd been with him prior to that, but had been sent out. And he's not only won a spot on the roster, he's in the lineup, he's sitting third, and he's leading the league at 338. And when I watched him two years ago in spring training, he didn't look like the type of hitter that was going to hit with any power, especially a number three hitter. Now he's got 10 home runs, 40 RBIs. And he's paying some dividends for the Yankees. Randolph at first base. And Mattingly takes his strike. 0 and 1. He'll go with the pitch. He'll go to left field. Ball's outside. If it's uh, down the middle, he'll hit it up the middle. And if it's on the inside half of the plate, he'll try to hit it with, with a little power. He's about as hot as Randolph. Mattingly 10 for his last 20. <laughs> 0 and 1 the count as the human wave begins again in Tiger Stadium. Low. They started this early in the season when the Tigers were hot. We saw it in Toronto. There it is, the in unison, section by section, the crowd rising. Is that an aerobic exercise? I don't know. They do it enough so that they can get a lot of exercise. I guess the last time we were in here, we must have seen it twice an inning. Well, the difference between here and Toronto, the Toronto fans did it when the Toronto uh, players were in the field. Same thing here right now in the first inning. Home team in the field. A five, two balls, one strike to count. Another good run situation here. Two balls, one strike. Three balls, one strike. They're the best times to send your runner. I think one of the biggest problems that Milt Wilcox has had is he's been very fine. He's trying to hit the outside corner with his fastball, and he hasn't been able to do it over the last five games. That's drilled to the gap in right center field, and it is off the fence. Randolph was running all the way, so he is being waved in. Whitaker's going to Parrish is not in time on a double by Mattingly. That was a good play all around. Good base running by Willie Randolph. Chet Lemon played the ball well off of the fence. We'll get to watch it again. Ball's hit hard in the gap. Randolph, you see, knows it in there, and he's gone. Lemon gets the ball right off of the fence, takes his time. A good throw to the cutoff. Whitaker got the ball stuck in the glove just for a second. Parrish trying to block the plate, but Randolph got in. There's another angle off the wall. You can see where he got the ball caught right there. A good throw to home plate. Just that little hesitation probably cost the room. You're right. Made the difference. One to nothing New York. Mattingly with his 41st RBI and the batter is Don Baylor. Who looks at his strike. <laughs> Baylor hitting 259. Baylor's been hot. He's been driving in better than a run a game for about three weeks now. And the Yankees tonight electing to go with him, even with a right-hander working, when Oscar Gamble would be a possible choice if he wanted a left-handed batting DH. Well, of course, Oscar's really struggling hitting 148. 
I went up to Don and I said, did you know last year you hit 364 against left-handers and only 264 against right-handers? And he said, well, that's because I didn't face you that much last year. But really, Don Baylor, uh, I've always felt, even though the statistics may lie, has, has always been a tough out for a right-handed pitcher. If he has any hole, it's up and in. But when he's hot, it's, hot, it's really difficult to get the ball there. Baylor swimming it foul, and the count, no balls and two strikes on Don. When Baylor's out, it looks like he gets the catcher signs and know, knows exactly what pitch the pitcher is throwing and what he's going to do with it. Yankees on top. Over the weekend, they lost two out of three to Baltimore. Prior to that, the series in Fenway providing a lot of dramatics, high scoring, typical Fenway affairs. Strike two pitch coming up to Baylor is outside. One and two to count. There's that high pitch. It was very close. You see it right here. Just a little bit up out of the strike zone, but right where he wanted to throw it. I think the difference, Donnie Baylor, when he's hot, is that he lays off that pitch. Breaking pitch, a liner on one hop, stopped by Trammell nicely, throws him out, and Manningly goes to third. Ball eating Trammell up, but Allen staying right with it, giving with it, and making the play. Nice play by the shortstop, who is having a great year. An outstanding play, and it looked like Baylor was sitting on that curveball. Ball hit hard. Short hops Trammell. Only a good shortstop stays with that ball. Keeps his eye right down into the glove. Now he knows he has it and a good throw to first base. So Mattingly at third, two down. Yankees lead one nothing, and Dave Winfield is second in the league in hitting, behind Mattingly. Dave at 336 is two points from the lead. And there's been Trammell has dropped to fifth, by the way. Batting average. Yeah, there's been some hard hit balls this inning. Want to know the count? Wilcox is not fooling him. No, he isn't. Uh, and again, uh, I think as a pitcher, of course, you want to stay out of the big inning. And even though Steve Kemp on deck has been hot, he knows that Winfield has been swinging the bat really well. And we'll just see if he pitches to him here. Ooh. One and one to count. Wilcox got off to a great start this year, as did Detroit. He just paralleled the team. He was 6-0 and with an ERA of just a little bit more than three. And here you see a low fastball. Dave Winfield being 6-6, he thinks his knees are just a little bit higher than that high or that low fastball. So Wilcox one and one with him. And it's grounded to the right side where Whitaker, to a serenade of blues, will throw him out. And that's after the Yankees. The run, two hits. They leave Mattingly a third after a half. It's the Yankees one. And the Tigers coming up. Stulem. Stulem. Do you know how I can get this big package to Seattle overnight? Gee, I don't know, Femur. Let's go up and bounce it off Boomer. Gosh, I don't know, fellas. Let's go up and run it by Rizzo. Let's parade this past Pooperman. Let's waltz it by Wimpus. Let's dance it by Dolt. If more people knew Federal Express handles great big packages, even up to 125 pounds, it sure would save everybody a whole lot of trouble. There's more for your life. Last year, while you were deciding which home computer to take home, Sears bolted on more than a million mufflers. While you were trying on the latest Gulagong activewear, Sears sold over nine million tires. And while you were checking out Sears' open home collection, we replaced more batteries than anyone else in America. So next time you drive over to Sears, drive right in. We install confidence. There's more for your life. For the Detroit Tigers tonight, as usual, it is Lou Whitaker who leads off at second base. Alan Trammell's been in a slump, but he's still batting 322. Hits second. Kirk Gibson, the big right fielder, bats third. And then Lance Parrish, who has 10 homers this season, is the cleanup hitter. Darrell Evans, acquired as a free agent over the winter, bats fifth. He's the DH with Chet Lemon in center field, batting sixth. Then Larry Herndon bats seventh, the Tiger left fielder. Dave Bergman, the hero two weeks ago with that home run against Toronto, hits eighth. And Barbaro Garbay plays third tonight, hits ninth. And for the Yankees back of Negro, it's 
Mattingly at first, Randolph at second, Bobby Meacham is the shortstop, and Roy Smalley at third. Camp in left, former Tiger. Ken Griffey in center, Dave Winfield in right, with Weiniger back of the plate. And 45-year-old Phil Necro, released by Atlanta following the season. He had spent his entire career with the Braves in Milwaukee and Atlanta, and then picked up by the Yankees, and what an acquisition it's turned out to be, because the Yankees without Necro would really be in dire straits. He's won nine, Gidry's won five, and no other Yankee pitcher has won more than two. He's had an incredible start. In 13 out of his 14 start, he starts, he's held the opposition to less than three runs, and 10 of those two runs. He's just, as you said, has really been almost the entire Yankee pitching staff. In his 25th professional season, he goes to work on Lou Whitaker, who bluffs a butt, takes low. One and all. And here you see the knuckleball. It's going to dance all around. Whitaker, again, being one of the better leadoff men in, in baseball, with 30 walks, as Earl said in the pregame show, we're going to see if he's going to make Phil Nico throw the ball over the plate. For a strike, and the count is one and one. Only two pitchers in the American League throw the knuckleball regularly. The other being Charlie Huff of Texas. Occasionally, Dan Quisenberry, the Royals reliever, pulls around with an upward. Two and one the count. I just kind of wonder. I know Negro has never, ever been a good starter until this season. Charlie Huff, of course, got off to a horrendous start, and now is. Really, I think the American League Pitcher of the Month in June. Toward the hole, backhanded nicely by Randolph, who throws Whitaker out. So one second baseman takes care of the other. We're out number one in the first inning. And Alan Trammell will be coming up. Whitaker got ahead in the count two and one, and he got his fastball to hit, and he hit it hard. But Randolph made a nice play. Alan Trammell had been leading the league in hitting. And he went into a slump. He was 0 for 21 prior to getting a base hit yesterday in Milwaukee, and he's won for his last 23, as you can see. Still hitting 322 and takes a strike on the inside corner. 0 and 1. Squacky Anderson, who turned 50 earlier this season, been here since 79, as Trammell takes outside 1 and 1. And Yogi Berra, whose team is 19 games back, whose co-pitching coach, Sammy Ellis, was sent to the minors, in effect. One and two. Sammy Ellis, who, along with Jeff Torborg, have been the Yankee pitching coaches, was sent down to be the minor league instructor. And also their bullpen coach, Jerry McNurtney, was, in essence, farmed out today as well. Travel down on strikes, two down. Here we see the one and two knuckleball. Trammell tr goes after it. It just darts down and away. Strike three. Well, if he gets ahead of you and you have to see three of those things, you're going to be lucky to get good wood on the ball. Batter is Kirk Gibson hitting 276. Just to fill you in on the Yankee changes, and they've made some roster changes in the past week. We mentioned McNurtney and Ellis going down in effect. Doug Holmquist has been added to the Yankee coaching staff as Gibson takes a strike. He'll join the team tomorrow. Mark Connor will join the team and he has been the pitching coach at Columbus. He'll be the co-pitching coach with Torborg. One and one. So a look into the Yankee dugout where they've done some shuffling on the roster in the past week with a retirement of Pinella at all and we'll detail that as we have time. And by the way, obviously, Yogi Berra was not too pleased in particular about Ellis's demotion. Two and one. The coach has to have the people that he wants with him. He doesn't have much of a shot. Of course, the Yankee pitching staff has been much maligned, and Sammy Ellis has defended him to the hilt. And apparently, that did not sit well with some of the people in New York. Two balls, two strikes. Word on McNurtney is that one of the reasons he may have been demoted was Dave Rigetti cutting his finger yesterday, if you haven't heard, sliced his index finger on the water cooler in the bullpen. He's on the disabled list. 
fouled away. And Rigetti has been doing a great job in relief. And as far as the closer, the short man is concerned now for the Yankees, I don't know where Barrow looks. Well, 19 games out, uh, you do some experimenting, see what you can do, try to get yourself realigned for next year. Not that the Yankees are giving up at this time of the year, because they certainly aren't, but there'll be some experimenting. Two balls, two strikes to count. Two out, bases empty. one nothing Yankees in the bottom of the first inning. Three and two the count. A lot of people will say, well, if you can't hit that knuckleball, why don't you try to punt it? Well, Gibson just tried to punt it, and it's no easier to punt than it is to hit. So full count here on Kirk Gibson. Not only trying to bunt it, he'll try to bunt with two strikes. Not bunting that one as he gets it in the air to deep right field and into the upper deck. Before the game, Sparky Anderson said if Necro hangs one, it's going to wind up in the upper, upper deck. He just did. Well, I can't really call that a hanger. That ball did a little something. We get to watch it right here. That ball did a little something. He's got Gibson out on his front foot. He seems to hold back the swing just a little bit, but gets it on the good part of the bat, and it went out of the ballpark. I think that, make, that makes a statement for the type of ballpark that this game is being played, and it's a great hitter's park. The background has always been either green or what we call this a light color blue that gives a hitter a, a great view of the of the pitch. I was going to say I, I agree with you. That was just a fly ball in a lot of ballparks in the American League. Parrish takes inside. Of course, the wind is blowing out to right field. So you look at the dimensions here, and they have an overhang in right field that hangs out probably 10 feet. That makes it even easier to hit all of First homer allowed by Necro this year to a left-hander, and that one is drilled foul. We'd only allowed two home, two home runs in 101 innings, I think, going into it. Well, there's Gibson, and I'll tell you, that home run is a tribute to how strong the man is because he was fooled just a little bit and got out on the front foot and still had enough to get it up in the upper deck. After trying to bunt. Two and two. Just as easy to hit it as bunt it. Once hit off Coit Wilhelm in 1965 in Chicago. And he threw me three knuckle balls. I thought I had each one of them zeroed in, and each time the ball did something different. Harris fouling it away. Two balls, two strikes again. One one tie, two out, no one on, bottom of the first inning. A lot of people are saying, yeah, Palmer, but you were a pitcher. But Palmer was a good hitter as a pitcher, and when the pitchers hit, he won a lot of ball games for himself. And could field too, couldn't he? Who are we that, talking about, Necro you, or me? You, you. I'd only had a good manager, I would have won more. <laughs> Harris strikes out, and that's the first inning. A run ahead, Gibson's over after one, a 1-1 one, one tie, and we'll return to Tiger Stadium right after this word from your local station. A profile of America's Chief Justice Warren Burger tomorrow on ABC's World News Tonight. The second Vista trial is now underway, and those people involved in it are having difficulty finding a jury. People who have not made up their minds. One of our stories right after Tiger Baseball. Look what's new at Pizza Hut. When you get a pizza, get a mug full of Pepsi for just 99 cents. Every time you come in for another pizza, get a refill free. You hand the mug to us empty, we'll hand it to you full. Anytime, day or night, weekdays or weekends, week in, week out. Order another pizza, get another refill. 99 cents, refills free. At your hometown Pizza Hut. We are Pepsi free, caffeine free. Now Diet Pepsi free has neutral sweet. Life just seems to get better and better. Diet Pepsi free. Diet Pepsi free just added something they call neutral sweet. I call it terrific. Diet Pepsi free. Diet Pepsi free with neutral sweet. Everything in life should be this good. And all that taste is caffeine free. Terrific. We are Pepsi free. Regular and diet. The latest scores tonight on Action News at 11. Steve Kemp will lead off for the Yankees as we go to the second. We talked about the Yankees shuffling on the coaching staff, and before the game, I talked 
to manager Yogi Berra. What about the move that went on yesterday now with your staff with Sammy Ellis being sent down to the minors as the roving instructor. Uh, were you in sync with that move were you consulted on that move by Steinbrenner. Well we were all consulted uh, I didn't like the move but uh, that's the way they wanted. the front office wanted it. they think it'd be a bigger help for us down in the minor leagues look at some of our young pitchers. So you were opposed to the move but what about in terms of uh, as you look at it the overview of that move is it something that will help this team do you feel. Well we don't know uh, I sure don't like to change uh, coaches in the middle of the stream you know, I like to keep the guys you know they're familiar with everything around here. That pretty much sums it up Yogi was not happy with it even though he was consulted about it and as Earl put it if you can't have the men working with you whom you desire makes it rather difficult. Yes uh, but if you think you got a good man and he can come back and uh, help some of your younger pitchers it might prove beneficial. Texas leading early over the Angels who are the only team in the West over 500. Here's Kemp who takes a strike. Kemp started out in the month of June very hot. St. Louis Montreal rained out the National League. But Kemp is over his last 14. Trying to get on track again and takes low and inside. One ball, one strike on Steve. Kemp started his career with the Tigers. Then he went to the White Sox. Then to the Yankees. Two and one the count. Kemp's first year in the big leagues, he'd have swung at a pitch like that. And one of the things that uh, uh, has been a big part of his success is laying off of pitches like that. He learned fast and he became an on base percentage man and really helps the ball club he's with. Back to left foul and the count two balls and two strikes. He'll be followed by Smalley and Griffey. 34 year old Milt Wilcox. He would be the number three starter on this staff with Morris and Petrie one and two. And you've got Juan Baron Gare who's been inconsistent but he'll give you a great game once in a while. Case in point Saturday when he shut out Milwaukee. Dave Roseman has also done well giving him the five innings of Sparky Anderson once. Well as we said with really a Lopez and Willie Hernandez and Doug Bear they can get five or six innings out of their starters and be satisfied. And Kemp goes down on strike. First strikeout for Bill Wilcox. One away in the second inning. We talked about Wilcox struggling with his control. Here's a good fastball right on the corner. Kemp can't quite get to it. Kemp wasn't looking for that pitch either. Switch hitter Roy Smalley is the batter. 529 lifetime against Milt Wilcox. Comes up hitting 260. One and the count. Dave Winfield, second in the league in hitting, coming in, grounded out in the first inning. One and one. That's the pitch you want to throw this fellow. He sits on a fastball each and every pitch. You think you've got him set up to throw one possibly high and tight or fastball low and away. He's always ready for it. He has a little trouble with that breaking ball. Ran it in on him and he hits a foul. One ball, two strikes. On deck is Ken Griffey, who is not particularly enamored hitting out of the eight spot. It's Smalley's out in front. Two down. And here you're going to see a pitch that Roger Craig, the pitching coach with Detroit, has had a lot of his pitchers throw the split finger fastball. Wilcox throws it to about maybe 30% of the time to left handed hitters. And there you saw the ball just dipping and going away from the left handed hitter. A very effective pitch. Ken Griffey, without a home run this season. Batting 263. Looks at the strike and the count is 0 and 1. Griffey, a 304 lifetime hitter, so rarely will you see somebody with those figures, and he's been around for a decade. 
hit number eight. Grounded back through the middle, and that's a base hit. So hit number three for the Yankees as Griffey gets aboard here in the second inning. And with Ken at first base and two down, we'll take a look at Bobby Meacham, the number nine hitter. Shortstop has been a disaster area for the Yankees this season. Meacham was up early this season, made an error in a game in April against Texas and was then sent to the minors. They've had Tim Foley there. They've had Andre Robertson trying to come back from that horrific auto accident playing shortstop, and he's been sent back to the minors. They re-signed Bucky Dan, had him playing at Columbus, and now they've recalled Meacham. Foul the way, 0-1. Well, I feel the future lies in either this fella or uh, Andre Robertson. Uh, I think they're going to have to put uh, either one of the two of them out there for a half a season, some 60, 70 ball games, and see what they can do. Let them get settled out there. It's been a big problem for them all year. Beecham is a switch hitter. And the outfield shades him the other way. And Parrish backhands it nicely to save any advancement by Griffey. There's the defensive alignment shading him toward left. One of the tougher plays in baseball, a breaking ball that bounces way out in front, just good reflexes. You don't even really have a chance to get in front of that and block it. You don't know which way the ball is going to go with the spin. Agility there was a good picture. He, he went after it with his glove in one position and switched it while the ball was on the way and made a heck of a stop. Keep a runner out of scoring position. Lance Parrish, don't have to tell you what he can do defensively. Good illustration right there, and everybody knows about his arm. And a home run record for catchers in the American League with yep. 32. Broke Yogi Berra's record at 30. Sparky also has a chance to rest him now and then, as he did yesterday, but keeps him in the lineup as the designated hitter. It's a nice advantage of having a six-game lead at this point in the season, Earl. Sit down a regular now and then. Give him a chance maybe to DH, as was the case, and try to keep fresh. Yes, it is. Uh, it's a smart move, even if you don't have a six-game lead, to keep him as strong as possible. But being out in front does afford you a nice little luxury strike here in the count two and two. And here again we see a 2-1 fastball right on the corner. A lot different pitch than he made to Don Mattley in the first inning that caused the one run with a double up the uh, gap. In the air to left field and earned it perfectly positioned for it. The top of the second. A hit, man left, end of one and a half, a one one tie in Detroit. This is today's Chevrolet. With the year round versatility of S10 Blazer. In spring, Blazer's right on the job or on the town. In summer, Blazer lets you get to work or get away. In fall, Blazer's ready for the chores or for the fun. In winter, Blazer's a great outdoor sport. Chevy S10 Blazer. Every season, you'll find more reasons to own one. No wonder S10 Blazer's the best-selling sport utility vehicle in America. I'd sure like another Strohs. No way. Alex, two cold Strohs. <laughs> Where do you see this? Just opened the refrigerator. Just opened one bottle. Just opened the other. Now he's pouring yours. Now he's pouring mine. Alex, you better be drinking your water. <laughs> Stroh's and Strohlite fire brewed for smoother taste. Too bad everyone isn't a sort of perfect sleeper or sleeper. He's the one who's awake. That's because he slept great on a sort of perfect sleeper mattress. You see, only Serta has the total suspension system, a new dimension of total support and comfort. So make a healthy investment in yourself. Son, let's talk about your future. Future? Be a sort of perfect sleeper, sleeper. Darrell Evans will lead off with the Tigers as they hit in the second inning, and I spoke with Darrell before the game. Darrell, when you step into the box against Negro, what's your approach? What are you thinking about? Well, I'm trying not to laugh, Al. We're good friends, and <laughs> I got to keep from doing that, but. Uh, just trying to stay back. Uh, I think the way to hit a knuckleball, the way I've had some success against him, is uh, trying to stay back as long as I can and hope that uh, when I'm swinging at the pitch, it's not taking it sharp, it's break. Uh, he's 
when he's on his pitch can move two or three different ways at times and uh, hopefully uh, he doesn't have a great one and it's pretty consistent and most of the time it comes into left handers. Evans is theory on hitting against Negro something he's done for years Phil with the Braves Darrell with the Giants and then before that Darrell was with the Braves for several years so they were teammates for quite a few seasons as Evans takes a strike on one. Yanks one Tigers one in the bottom of the second inning Evans Lemon and Herndon against Negro strike two. That's an interesting philosophy but Brooks Robinson when he went up against a knuckleballer will say Wilbur Wood was just the opposite. There's that knuckleball again. Does all kinds of funny things but Robinson wanted to go out and hit it before it got to the plate. He said hit it just like a fastball go out and get it. One and two on Evans who's in a slump. Darrell hitting 143 in his last 20 games. But still draws a lot of walks leads the club with 35 and takes outside two and two. Chet Lemon on deck. Well Darrell Evans said last week that he felt the big difference in the American League and the National League was the strike zone just a little bit bigger over here. And the strike zone was a little too big there for Evans is liking as he issues a protest to John Hirschbeck you judge here knuckleball that he thinks is outside of course he was complaining on the second strike well he didn't think it was a strike and I didn't think either watch this look oh my huh. goodness oh my goodness well we said the strike zone's a little bit bigger over here I guess that's a pretty good example that's three strikeouts for Necro, and the batter is Chet Lemon. Inside, 1 0. Chet Lemon, in the latest tabulation for the All Star game, leading, the leading vote getter amongst the outfielders. The top three outfielders will be going in. 1 and 1. Reggie Jackson and Dave Winfield. Would be in the outfield with him if the balloting were to end tonight. Two and one to count. Reggie's not even an outfielder anymore, is he? Right. Well, you, if, you know the fans, of course, oft times go on past performance. You're looking uh, at Rod Carew leading Eddie Murray, who's, in, who's having the all-time year for Baltimore. Grounded to short, gathered in by Meacham, and dug out by Mattingly. So you have. Two down here in the second inning. Lance Parrish is leading as you look at the play again. Well, the ball was hit hard. Meacham did everything right. Got over in front of the ball, set himself, showed a real good arm on this throw, but threw it into the dirt. Mattingly come up, and Mattingly's considered to have one of the real good gloves, the first base in the American League. Showed it on that play. Two down, and the batter is Larry Herndon. One and zero. Mentioned Lance Parrish is the leading vote getter amongst the catchers. Ron Peru at first. Lou Whitaker is the leader at second. Count Ripken the leader at short. George Brett at third. And we told you about the outfielders. As Herndon pops it up in foul ground, coming back is Weininger, and he makes the play to retire the side. Three up and three down, and the Yankees will come to bat at the top of the third at Tiger Stadium. New York one. Detroit won. Nine, nine. The battle between the chef no, no, no. and the baker nine, nine. has been going on for centuries until the sharp carousel convection microwave oven brought them together. As a microwave, it's better for fish and casseroles. As a convection oven, it's better for cakes and pies. And the sharp carousel turns the food so you don't have to. For perfect, even cooking every time. The sharp carousel convection microwave oven. From sharp minds come sharp products. Firestone announces our master plan for better car care. Master Care. It's the mastermind of Firestone, our engine diagnostic center that virtually eliminates repair guesswork. It's Firestone's Master Care mechanics. It's strict quality control. It's a warranty on parts and labor good nationwide. And that's just the beginning. Our master plan for better car care. Master Care by Firestone. Sounds like there's a bear in the beer. 
What are we gonna do? I'll be right back. Where's he going? He's going to get that beer from that bear. It's not just a bear. It's a grizzly. Yeah. But that's not just a beer. That's fire-brewed strohs. I thought we had three cases. Well, had to make a deal. Strohs and Strohlite fire-brewed for smoother taste. 76 Olympic gold medalist Howard Davis wants to take the title from undefeated champ Edwin Rosario live. Plus a special Olympic track and field report on ABC's Wide World of Sports Saturday. Great shot cooling off on a warm night in Detroit. She's adorable. Part of a big crowd at Tiger Stadium where they love their Tigers. She had an ice cream in her hand, but she wasn't going to take a bite while the camera was no on. No way. She's on the Chet Forty diet. <laughs> Chet was named after his waist size, wasn't he? Randolph, thousand away in the count on one. And one thing that's really irritating when you're pitching is when you have a guy like Willie Randolph, who's an excellent leadoff man, coming up leading off the inning. I know guys like Earl, who managed for years and were successful at it. Are able to get guys like Willie leading off innings, but when you get on base 40% of the time as a pitcher, it makes your job just a little bit more difficult. Well, who's hot? Who's been hot? Juan Benitez of California had a great week. Beans and Peru right there. Randolph hit 500 over the seven day period and Mattingly. So the Yankees really getting the most out of that series in particular in Fenway. As Randolph hits it right back to the mound, and Wilcox flips to Bourbon. One away here in the third inning with a score tied 1 1. You tuned in late. Yankees scored in the first on Randolph's single and Mattingly's double. Kirk Gibson hit a home run off Negro in the bottom of the first inning. Here's Weiniger. 15 game hitting streak. Line to center in the first inning. Hit the ball hard. Switch, switch hitter, one of three switch hitters in the Yankee lineup tonight. Smalley and Meacham are the others. Five for a ball, one and oh. Last inning and so far this inning, Wilcox control has been almost excellent. He's putting a breaking ball right where he wants to and seems to be spotting a fastball either up at the letters or down at the knees. Back out of play. One and one. Tiger Stadium. They said about uh, 30 to 35,000 tonight. Might have more than that as we look around. Not too many empty seats. Yankees in town for the first time this season. Ooh. One and two. Yankees could be party out. They always generate enthusiasm. That's a pretty shot. Great angle. The way it looks if you're in the upper deck, I guess. Back a third. Look around Tiger Stadium. Grounded to the right of Whitaker, and he gets him for the out. Two down here in the third inning, and Don Mattingly will be the batter. Well, a big week of sports on ABC. We'll have primetime coverage Thursday, the U.S. Olympic track and field trials, as you know, underway at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Carl Lewis among those qualifying yesterday, Thursday night at 8 Eastern time. We'll have coverage for you. Also, next Sunday night from the Coliseum in Los Angeles as well and Saturday afternoon one ball no strikes to count on Mattingly who doubled in the New York run in the first inning and Wilcox got in trouble pitching to Mattingly by getting behind him two and one and having to come in with a fastball again he's behind him again over one and oh first time I watched this fella he was a good breaking ball hitter he's a good fastball hitter Again, the thing that surprises me is the power that uh, he's come up with. Well, he's hit eight of those ten home runs he's hit this season in Yankee Stadium, and if you can pull the ball and you're smart enough to look for the pitch that you can handle and pull, it's going to make you a pretty good hitter to hit in that ballpark. Don't get the appeal there from Jerry Newdecker as he checks his swing. Another look to it on the count. I believe he held up. Now two and two on Mattingly, who's not only hitting well but making contact very consistently. He struck out only 11 times this season in 61 games. He's no slouch with that glove. 
as you saw in the bottom of the second inning. Good pitch he fought off there. Two and two on Mattingly, who came up through the Yankee system. Seems to almost be a rarity to be a Yankee and to have come up through their minor league system. Well, they, they produced a lot of ball players, but what they've done is taken those young ball players, traded them to another organization for an established ball player to try to win a pennant on any one particular year, the year that they might be in that race. And foul tipped and held by Perry, so he strikes out for only the 12th time this season. And Wilcox has three strikeouts as we go out another look at Parrish hanging on to the foul tip. It's 1-1 in the middle of the third. This bartender's the next big league pitcher and loves to serve fire-brewed strobes. See what I mean? That was his fastball. That was the curve. <laughs> Look out. Wild pitch. What was that? Relief pitcher. Strohs and Stroh Life fire brewed for smoother taste. Now you can give Olympic gold and silver, because for the first time, the U.S. Treasury is issuing Olympic commemorative coins. They're beautiful gifts or keepsakes, and the precious metal you buy could help win Olympic medals. Be part of the dream today. Support the home team all the way home. At many banks, coin dealers find stores, savings and loans, and post offices. Say goodbye to America's favorite can of motor oil. That Quaker State quality America has trusted for over 70 years now comes exclusively in this unique, easy-to-pour plastic bottle made to cost you nothing extra. So long, Spouts. See you, dirty hands. Goodbye, oily rags. No more leaky cans. Get Quaker State's pen-grade protection and no mess. Easy to open, pour, and reseal. Today, you need an oil this good in a package this good. The first basin. That's a pretty sight unless you have to fly through it. Some cumulus cloud, a little build up there. But uh, basically clear skies. Had some rain early on. But the field in excellent shape, good drainage here. And we're 1-1 as we go to the bottom of the third inning. Dave Bergman to lead things off, has one home run this season. And he did it two weeks ago tonight in the 10th inning to beat Toronto on a spectacular at bat after he fouled off seven pitches on the 13th pitch into the upper deck and went and everybody went home happy. It was a dramatic moment. Foul at the plate. One I, ball one strike. I think he's a low ball hitter but uh, I guess with the knuckle ball it doesn't make any difference whether you throw that knuckle ball high in the strike zone or low in the strike zone or whether it goes up or whether it goes down. Well, we talked last Monday night about there's no bigger PR agent in baseball than Sparky Anderson and he's fallen in love with Dave Bergman. He loves his glove because he's an excellent defensive first baseman. He's hitting almost 300. Not a whole lot of power. As you said the only home run he's hit is two weeks ago. But he sprays the ball around, gets some clutch RBIs, and does everything you can to have a great attitude and a, and a winning one. Rounded slowly towards second, and Randolph throws Bergman out with a first out. Here in the bottom of the third inning, one away. And Barbaro Garbay is the batter. Garbay is a fellow who has been moved around by Anderson. His best position is probably first base, where the Tigers already have Bergman and Evans. He's playing third tonight. He can also play the outfield. And one thing you know, he can hit. And I think this fellow, if he should work his way into the lineup regularly, would hit a lot of home runs in this ballpark. For a ball on the count one and zero. Oh. He's at third tonight. The Tigers have been going with Howard Johnson at third of late, but we mentioned Sparky as Barbeau because he feels he's a good breaking ball hitter. 
I think he also felt that Howard Johnson would might have trouble with Necro's knuckleball. And as you said, Barbet hits the breaking ball a lot better. And if Necro throws that knuckleball right, it's going to break. Two and one. The wave starting again. By the way, it's occasionally you'll see our center field camera. That shot will begin to bounce. That's the vibration of everybody standing and sitting as the wave rolls through. The pitch before this was a 2-0, and, oh, and it was a fastball. But it wasn't a fastball down the middle. There's the wave again. It... Now we've got a 3-1 and one count. Now you got a 3-2 and two count. Fastball inside. Well, he's thrown three straight fastballs. And I would assume that to mean that he does not think Garvey, with the wind blowing strongly to right field, is capable of hitting a home run. Plus, he doesn't want to have that base on ball. Two of those fastballs, though, one of them was right on the outside corner. The other one was right on the inside corner. Garvey hits it down to third, fielded by Smalley. Boy throws it out. Two down. Negro has started by retiring eight of the first nine. The only blemish, Gibson who hit the home run, and with two down, up comes Lou Whitaker. Two games in the USFL, one taking place right up the road. Michigan trying to clinch a playoff spot. They are the defending champs. 14-7 Oklahoma, though, in the second quarter, and San Antonio leads Houston by 10 in the second period. Whitaker outside. One ball, no strikes. were the only two hitters that uh, Negro's been behind. Hasn't walked the man yet. And he has struck out three. Three and one. Well, Whitaker's not a very big guy, but if he has to throw him another fastball and he gets it up and out over the plate, this wind blowing out, it's the kind of ball that he has been known to turn on and hit some home runs with. We saw it last Monday night. Well, Whitaker was thinking home run on the 3-1 pitch because he had a good he had a good cut. Wind's blowing strong out to right field. And I was surprised that Whitaker didn't offer after that 3-0 uh, pitch. Whitaker hit 15 homers two years ago, 12 last year. That's five this season thus far. Well, he jumped on the house fastball last Monday night in Toronto and turned out to be the winning runs. That's what makes him such a tough out. He'll take a walk if you give it to him, and he can homer if you make a bad pitch. And Whitaker is on. So Nico issues his first walk. Tigers have a man aboard with two down. And up comes Allen Trammell. And even though Whitaker only has three stolen bases this year, it's a base-stealing situation. I asked Sparky why he doesn't run more, and he says, the guy shows me he can steal, I'll send him. If not, let's let him stay over in first and let the next guy hit a double or a home run. Kind of your philosophy, Earl. Well, that's a good philosophy. Trammell the batter with Whitaker at first base. I always wondered why you never sent Booth Powell more. <laughs> what a go. Necro and Weiniger, as you can see, it's not bad when you think about it because normally the first thing that comes to mind, knuckleball pitcher, easy to run on. Not necessarily. Well, it isn't when you cheat. He stops his hands in a couple of different places. He'll sometimes stop them, sometimes it's just one constant movement. It just makes it very difficult for a runner to get a running lead, and that's primarily what the good base runners want to get. I think basically if you were going to run, you were going to... Would, be in a situation where you would hope that Weinerker would not be able to handle the pitch. 
you'd want to run on a knuckleball. Weiniger's got the oversized glove on, and believe me, it's tough to get that little baseball out of that big glove in a hurry. Two and one to count. Weiniger's done a very good job this year catching Nico. There's a good picture of the oversized glove. Fastball missing outside, two and two. Make it three and one. Three balls and one strike now as Trammell looks down at Grammis. Whitaker also checked for the shine. That last pitch was a fastball, and the speed gun timed it at 77 miles an hour. Broken back, grounder down to third. Smalley up with it, and throws Trammell out. So Allen's slump continues. He's now one for his last 25, and we've played three in Detroit, where it's the Yankees won, the Tigers won. This is today's Chevrolet. Chevrolet Caprice Classic, one of the world's great automotive values. And for 13 years in a row, the full-size Chevrolet has been the best-selling car of its kind. It's easy to see why. Compare Caprice's deep cushion comfort, its ride, its full-size room, and its affordable price. You can, of course, spend more for a car. But why in the world would you? Quality. That's today's Chevrolet. Hey, guys, I'm back. Catch anything, Riley? Yeah, I caught this granddaddy of a fish. But when I got him in the boat, he says, I'll give you three wishes if you throw me back. A talking fish? Well, it was hot. I was thirsty, so I wished for a nice cold Stroh's beer. And there it was. Mmm. Tasted so good, I wished for another one. Two wishes, two Stroh's. And what'd you do with the third wish? Hey, would I forget my friends? Stroh's and Stroh Light. Fire brew for smoother taste. I'm Mr. Goodwrench. You know what starts when your engine starts? Engine wear. 50 strokes, 100 strokes, 200 piston strokes of wear per second. Only a fine lubricant can protect it. Introducing new GM Goodwrench Motor Oil. The motor oil from General Motors that meets or exceeds all GM specifications. Great protection for me, Mr. Goodwrench. To keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. Michaels with Earl Weaver and Jim Palmer at Tiger Stadium in Detroit. The Yankees and the Tigers tied 1-1. And the middle of the order coming up for the Yankees as Don Baylor leads off in the fourth inning. Then we'll see Dave Whitfield and Steve Kemp. Baylor grounded out of the first inning. Bill Wilcox working for the Tigers as Baylor grounds it foul outside third. 0-1. Looks to me like Baylor's sitting on that breaking ball. Really looks like he came out to the park tonight to hit a curveball out the park. One ball, one strike to count on Don Baylor. And some of you are experiencing some temporary, what we hope are temporary audio problems, and we're obviously working to rectify it. One and two. There you saw the good high fastball. If you had a scattering report, and you would say, how are you going to pitch to Don Baylor? You'd say, don't throw him any low fastballs. Try to keep the ball up and in. I thought he made a rather insightful statement when he was playing up in Seattle. Kingdom, he said, every time I come to home plate, I feel like I'm in scoring position up here. It's such a great park to hit in really feel that hitters come to the play here in Tiger Stadium and have the same feeling. You don't hit at the center field. It's a wonderful park to hit it. Two balls, two strikes to count on Don Baylor. Check the field. No. Held up. Three and two. First base up Steve Palermo. That's uh, Lolich had so much success here because his control was so good that he kept uh, the ball away from both left-handed hitters and right-handed hitters. And when you did get wood, it was always the center field. Baylor takes 
takes outside. Wilcox going to strike three. Now Taylor draws the walk. Here we're going to see possibly a floating strike zone, a pretty good pitch. If I was fishing, I'd sure want that. I'm sure Daryl Evans is saying, strike on me, a strike on him. Well, we saw the emotion uh, Wilcox has played, so we know he wanted it. Type of pitch that can get a manager thrown out to ball game. There's too many of them uh, during the course of the night. How would you know? Well, he knew how to get thrown out. It I just knew depended how to who was pitching. <laughs> <laughs> how many times, Earl? What'd you wind up with? Uh, 89. 89. I never got thrown out of one that Tomer was pitching because I knew I'd have to stay in and go get him in the seventh race. <laughs> Dave Winfield, 89 games from which Weaver was ejected. Think about that. That's more than half a season. Yeah, but it's only six a year, and it's less than one a month. Half empty, half full theory, huh? Hit in the air to right field, and misjudging it was Gibson, who then plays it on a hop. It looked like Gibson had it all away, and if nothing else, Baylor couldn't move, and Baylor had to stop in second. Well, there's a, something that possibly could have happened here that only you and a dugout know. The ball was hit right on the fist. Winfield had a strong uh, swing, but didn't hit the ball hard. It hung up in the air, and it looks to me like Gibson had trouble with the lights. He had the ball all the way, slowed down, then just tried to keep it from going by him. Ball should have been caught. The only way we'll ever know if the lights did bother him is find out tomorrow. So you, Baylor stops at second, Winfield at first. Here's Kemp. Are you going to bunt Earl? I mean, you have a guy that's nine and three with a 177 ERA. Yes. I'm going to bunt for a base hit here. But this guy doesn't run very well. You're still accomplishing the sacrifice if he doesn't do that. He's not bunting at least on the first pitch, and it's 0-1. Yogi was on all those powerful Yankee teams. No balls, one strike on Kemp. Yankees one, Tigers one. Fourth inning, the Yankees threatening with two on. Nobody out. You know, they've got a guy pitching for him, a Negro, who's only given up 1.77 runs per ball game. Two runs at this stage of the game would look mighty good to me. And I don't ordinarily say that, you right? Got it. I'll leave it in this ballpark. Yeah, even in this ballpark. You're mellowing. Uh, with two strikes, the set, uh, sacrifice situation is gone now anyway. I think you have to understand, Al, that it's a lot easier to sit up here in a booth and say you would bunch than <laughs> to be a manager than actually do it. <laughs> yeah. He says he would have bunted, but with Steve Kemp, he would have thought about all the years where Kemp drove in all those big runs and hit the 20 home runs, and he would have had them swinging away. In all those years, he'd have hit do a few double plays, too. And it stays 0-2. Well, you know, Howard still wants you to butt in the 79 series, Earl. Well, I know it, and I know Howard's watching, and that's why I said I thought. Howard's probably not watching. He's probably judging the bite of we pet fair tonight. I think it's that time of year. Two pitch is high. It was high at the strike zone. Wilcox wanted it, but that was well, one of the little dance there. step that Mill Wilcox does. And Kent goes down swinging. Second time, Kemp has struck out. So one down, two on. Smalley coming up in this ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Strohs and Strolite. Fire brewed for smooth taste. Smalley 0 for 1, batting 258. One. 
one and oh. One run, four hits for the Yanks. One run, one hit for the Tigers. A home run by Gibson in the first. Two balls, no strikes. Baylor at second. Winfield at first. Well, this is a position Wilcox didn't want to get himself into. Behind 2-0 and and have to come to Smalley with a fastball. As you pointed out before, Smalley just waits on fastball every time he's up there. Do it right by him that time. Two and one. Well, to get Roy Smalley out, as Earl said, he is a good fastball hitter, but he's a good fastball hitter in the middle of the plate. If you can get the ball way in or on the corner, like Mill Wilcox just did, you can occasionally be successful. Reaches out and hits it in the air to left field. That's Herndon. Two down. So Baylor is still at second and Winfield is still at first after Kemp has struck out and Smalley has flied out. And the batter is Ken Griffey who singled in the second inning. One for one. Not to say I told you so, but that could have been a sacrifice fly. Had Kemp bunted and moved the runners along. I think one reason he may not have punted is that Necro, uh, even though he's pitched extremely well this year, has only completed two out of 14 games. Your number one bullpen pitcher just went on the disable list with an index finger injury. Yogi might be saying, hey, I got to get a lot of runs tonight. That's food for thought. And a good point. 0-1 oh, on Griffey. Maybe we're not going to win 2-1 to one or 3-1. to one. Of course, the Tigers are leading the American League and runs scored with over five a game. So it is something to think about. Quickly ahead on Griffey is Wilcox. No balls and two strikes. Cox is putting everything he's got into every pitch, it seems like. Griffey has faced Wilcox just a limited amount of times, but four for five against him. One ball, two strikes. And there you saw Ken Griffey's ability. Why he's a 300 hitter lifetime. Wilcox made a great pitch low and away, and Griffey fouled it off. I always felt that Griffey would be a much tougher out on AstroTurf. He has that ability to hit the ball with top spin and pretty good eye on the plate, as you saw right there, Al. And he played most of his career on AstroTurf in Cincinnati. Again, Wilcox trying to go away. The ball's off the corner. You got to give Griffey some credit for not swinging at it. Again, you're at a very emotional time. Wilcox has not pitched poorly, a base on ball and a jammed hit. He wants to get out of this inning. And instead, now he's three and two, which means the runners are going on this pitch as Baylor takes off from second and Winfield will be moving from first. And I'm guessing breaking ball after those three pitches. Well, the last time I threw Ken Griffey a breaking ball, he hit it in the third deck in Yankee Stadium. I would stay with the fastball away and it's a fastball and it's lined to center and there's Lemon on the move. Chet Lemon holds it down as Griffey hit it on the money. But Lemon gets a great jump per usual. And that's that for the Yanks who get the first two men aboard here in the fourth inning and come up empty as you're watching Palmer again. Was, Palmer was right. The ball was on the outside half of the plate. Lemon again got a good jump. Caught the ball and that's the end of the inning. We'll be right back. I'm the Coachman Dalmatian. My name is Pete, and millions of miles have passed beneath my feet. 
I've led a mighty army to the great outdoors. I'll show you the fun of a caravan and tailgate parties for you sports fans from travel trailers to motor homes. You'll live in style wherever you roam. I'll get folks together like you've never been together before. It takes a coachman to make the trip, so follow Pete, leader to the great outdoors. Sounds like there's a bear in the beer. What are we gonna do? I'll be right back. Where's he going? He's going to get that beer from that bear. That's not just a bear. That's a grizzly. Yeah. But that's not just a beer. That's fire-brewed strohs. I thought we had three cases. Well, had to make a deal. Strohs and Strohlite fire-brewed for smoother taste. Make every document the same size. Charts in color. Pictures in blue. Headings in black. And collated. Fire! This job is for a multiple choice copier, the Canon MP155. Its zoom system makes a full range of enlargements and reductions, up to 15 copies a minute in black, brown, or blue, and can collate. Do I know how to pick a value? Yes! Yes! yes. yes. Canon's MP155 gives you more for less. For information, call toll free. but only eight. Gibson, Parrish, and Evans facing Negro. Kurt Gibson, great football player at Michigan State, wide receiver, could have played pro football. Tries to butt his way on. Remember, he tried to butt his way on just prior to the home run in the first inning. Phil Negro, his teammate, Jose Rijo, who is the youngest player in major leagues born the same day Phil picked up his first win 13th of May 19 years ago Palmer won a game that year in the major leagues I won five but I, I, I think I won one in April hit a home run to win my game of course well along with Louis Aparicio and I hit a home run to put us the head off Jim Bowden and then I got us behind and Louis Aparicio won the game for me with a three run home run Get a big head start on Necro age wise, but here he is at the age of 45, oldest player in the big leagues. His brother is still a most effective pitcher for Houston. He and Nolan Ryan, the aces of the Astros staff. Well, if Hoyt Wilhelm answers my phone calls, I'm planning on making a comeback. Wilhelm pitched into his 50s, as I recall. I don't know if it was that long, but. Very close. It's funny. I mean, I had Earl come out on a number of occasions and ask me if I've ever considered trying to throw a knuckleball when I was getting pounded around. Unfortunately, I never could do that. And wouldn't try. Three, two to Gibson. Grounded right back through Nico and over second in the center field. And so Gibson has both. Tiger hits with a single to center here in the fourth inning, and it will bring up Lance Parrish. This Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, San Juan, Puerto Rico is the site. Edwin Rosario, tough man to beat. Well, he's come back from a couple of hand injuries. Defends his title against Howard Davis, the 1976 Olympian. And on the subject of the Olympics, the Olympic trials in L.A. We'll have a report for you on Wide World this Saturday afternoon. Struck out in the first. Necro has three strikeouts. Starts Parrish with a strike on one. Among the milestones that Necro is bearing down on, the 3,000 strikeout mark, he needs 15, and he'll become the ninth pitcher in Major League history to reach 3,000. That's quite a milestone. Just the fact he's pitched over 4,700 innings is just phenomenal. It is. When you think of all of the guys who come up and, and look so good early in their careers, and then you know, the arm problems and the other things that happen, even though they are decent pitchers, just that longevity factor, the endurance, is simply amazing. Well, it's incredible that they really gave up on him in Atlanta. Pitched very well from June on last season. 
Runner is going, pitch is high, throw from Parrish is a strike to get him. From Weiniger, I said Parrish, because it was a Parrish type throw with Parrish at the plate. Well, it was a knuckleball, but it was high where Parrish could handle it. But there's another perfect throw right on the money. We get to see it again from high above. Gibson, not too good a break, but real fast runner. But the throw's there waiting for him. So that's the first out of the inning, and the count is now two and one as Parrish gets under it. Pops it foul off to the left. That's Smalley coming over with Weiniger, but it's back in about four rows. So the count now two and two. This is a time when a manager really wants to kick himself in the rear end for putting that steal on. What is the type of gamble that Sparky figured would be a good one to take? Gibson leading the club in steals, 13 and 15 attempts. Two-two pitch is chopped foul outside third. Yankees with a run at the top of the first, and then Detroit countered on Gibson's homer. It's been all the scoring. One-one, one out, nobody on. Last of the fourth. High in the air to left field and toward the line as Kemp comes in and makes the catch in fair territory. So with two down in the fourth inning, we'll take a look at Darrell Evans. Tigers are leading the league in hitting. Pitching has been outstanding. Defense leading the league in that department. As you look at Evans wearing the protector to guard against foul balls. 0 1 the count. I imagine if there's any pitch you foul off your ankle or off your foot, it's the knuckleball. Well, Darrell's no dummy. Struck out on two questionable pitches. Said he was going to try to stay back and wait. Came up this time and swinging. Lofts it in the air to left field and curling toward the line. Going to be a tough play and almost a spectacular play by Mitra. What an effort, though. Diving for it. That would have been guaranteed to lead off this week in baseball, and he made it. Outstanding effort. He, he went a real long way for the ball, and from sitting in the booth, it didn't look like he was going to close to it. Even here, it doesn't look like it. Completely outstretched. And the ball just hit on the heel of the glove instead of the pocket. You're right. He got there. He was right there. Just called up from Columbus. Bobby Meacham. Well, Meacham and Andre Robertson both have the abilities to become an outstanding shortstop, and if they can get enough hitting around them, they'll be set at that position for a few years. Evans takes outside. One ball, two strikes on Darrell. Well, it's just hard to fathom that if you bring a shortstop up at the beginning of the season, he'd make one error, even though it was a meaningful error, and he'd be in the minor leagues the next day. Not exactly a confidence booster if you're a young player. Well, Andre Robertson was their regular shortstop last year. They claimed that that move had been in the making for some two or three days. And being involved in things like uh, that myself, I can see where that would be true. Full count on Evans. Uh, Robertson recuperating from the bad automobile accident he had was left in Florida. Spent a little time in the minor leagues. They thought he was ready. Or at least they claimed the air had nothing to do with it. Foul tip and Evans just does stay alive as Weininger can't hold on. Three and two. Yankees 19 back coming in as the Tigers get off to that blistering start, 35 and five. Blew just about everybody out of there. Toronto was hanging right in, and Toronto still hanging in. Six back. Foul tip. This time Weininger holds on. Another strikeout. That's number four for Father Time. As we go to the fifth, it's the Yankees one and the Tigers one. This is today's Chevrolet. Taking charge with Cavaliers. 
the hottest selling Chevrolet today. Cavalier, more horsepower than the three leading imports with a two liter electronically fuel injected engine. Cavalier, more sedan room than Honda Accord, Nissan Sentra, or Toyota Tercel. The front drive Cavaliers. Grab one for a cool, low price. Cavalier, one hot car. That's today's Chevrolet. Now Washington's better. Way better. Nashville's better. Far better. Los Angeles is better. Really better. Now Holiday Inn is a better place to be. Almost every seven days, a brand new Holiday Inn hotel opens in the locations you want the most. Better hotels in the best locations. That's why we're number one. We're number one. Worldwide host. First to what you want the most. Call 800 Holiday. Holiday Inn is a better place to be. Nearly four hours. That's how long it took us to paint this room with a roller. Then we painted it in less than one hour with the new Wagner Power Roller. A living room that took nearly seven hours. The Wagner Power Roller finished in less than three. The Power Roller pumps paint straight from the can to the roller or to any of several optional accessories. Why waste your time painting a pan when you could be painting your walls instead? The Wagner Power Roller. The right tool for painting. United States Olympic trials continue with explosive track and field competition. See gold medal hopefuls Carl Lewis and the amazing Edwin Moses, plus many more, Thursday night on ABC. Olympic trials coming your way this week. Should be a fascinating week in Los Angeles. I'll be heading on out there after the game tonight, and we'll have uh, three days of coverage for you Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday as our Olympic track and field team is selected. Yankees, as you can see, have done so much juggling and shuffling this season. Everybody has to check the lineup card every day to find out if they're in and, if so, where they're playing. Another combination tonight as we go to the fifth inning. And the leadoff batter, Bobby Meacham, takes a look at his strike. Bobby Meacham fly down in the second inning. Just called up from Columbus. By the way, the Yankees have brought Clay Christensen back when they activated the pitcher Mike Armstrong the other day. They'd sent Christensen out. But then when Rigetti got hurt yesterday, they had to put Dave on the disabled list. They brought Christensen back. So a very short line stay in the minors to play. As Beecham strikes out on three pitches. Bill Wilcox has. A total of five strikeouts. And Willie Randolph is the batter. I was always under the impression that if you sent a player to the minor leagues that he had to spend 10 days down there before he could be at least 10 days before he could be recalled. Now whether they got special permission from the American League president or not I, I really don't know. They did. You're exactly right. That is exactly the case. But when Rigetti got hurt they appealed and they were granted it with Christensen able to join the team. At least according to what Yogi Berra told me before the game. Randolph. One for two. In the air to deep left center field. Herndon goes racing back, and that one's off the fence. Herndon plays it like a high line player, but settles for getting it back in by travel. And Randolph thought for a moment about extending it to third, but stops at second with a double. So Willie Randolph with his second hit, and he is red hot. From high above, we get a good look. Ball's hit well. It was two bases all the way. You can see from this angle how hard it was hit. Hit the wall on a fly. Pretty good play by Herndon as it come off the wall pretty hard. If it would have got by him, there was a chance for three. So now Weiniger with his 15-game hitting streak. 0 for 2 tonight. Fly to center, grounded to second. Actually, more like a line to center. He hit that ball hard in the first inning, and Lemon made a nice play. Strike on one. You hate to be redundant, but Mill Wilcox is not overpowering when he makes good pitches. With his fastball, he gets away with them. When he gets behind Willie Randolph and throws the ball in the middle of the plate, they hit the ball hard. And there you see another good breaking ball. When, you had, when he has all three of his pitches working for him, 
fastball which he can spot in and in and away and also he can throw that split finger fastball and then drop that curveball. He can be very effective but when he gets behind. I think that's one of the reasons he's been hit hard over the last five games. He's just not making good pitches. There's one thing we know Willie Randolph can hit the high fastball. One year against the Orioles he had 21 hits 19 of them came on high fastballs fastballs above the belt. But Wilcox has been making exceptional pitches in good spots. One ball two strikes with Randolph at second one out fifth inning at Tiger Stadium game tied one one in the air to shallow right center field lemon racing in has to play it on the hop Randolph had to hold so he stops at third and there are runners at first and third little looping single to center field and that's a 16 game hitting streak now for Butch Weiniger and the Yankees threatened again they had two on nobody out of the fourth and Wilcox was equal to the task but now he has to go through the heart of the order with one out and two on and Mattingly at the plate doubled and struck out. And it makes a big difference now when you have a couple of guys on and you have to face the seventh eighth and ninth hitters versus coming into the heart of the order. Well as you know in this situation I'd like my pitcher just to go after that hitter if you have to give up one run or if you get out of this inning with one run you're in pretty good shape. League's leading hitter at the plate and the Tiger infield is looking for the double play. They won't get it as it's drilled to deep right center field. Lemon goes back makes the catch on the warning track and the Yankees take the lead as Randolph scores and Weiniger gets back to first. But that one stayed in and that one was hit almost 400 feet. We get to see it again from above and you're right that ball was hit 400 feet. 400 feet. It's right at the 415 yard mark, uh, 415 foot mark when it comes down. Sacrifice fly, but it does take some of the pressure off of Milt Wilcox. He gave up that one run. Now he's got two outs and a man on first base. Two to one Yankees. Mattingly has driven in both runs tonight. Baylor is the batter. Wax it foul over the roof and out into the street. Well, what Mattingly did was have enough confidence look for a pitch that he could hit a sacrifice fly with. He got a fastball up in the strike zone. Hit it well. Got that run in. One of the luxuries of hitting with less than two outs and runners in first and third or just a runner on third base. One on Baylor. One ball, one strike now. Well, that reminds me of the story you told us when we had that club house meeting in Milwaukee where you, you said you never left a man on third with less than two outs. That's exactly right. And I think somebody said yes because they always pinch hit for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's half right. <laughs> What do you mean? What's the other half? They didn't say that out loud. I want to tell you that. that that's the first time I heard that story. That fellow would have been playing in Rochester. Now that's one thing, Earl. You never held a grudge. What if I told you the fellow who said it was Brooks Robinson? He would have said that's fine. I'd have been managing in Rochester. <laughs> One two pitch coming to Don Baylor and he strikes him out. Half a dozen for Wilcox. Yankees get a run, two hits, leave one. In the middle of the fifth inning, it's the Yankees two, the Tigers one. Was the first place Falcon settle for dried out chicken? No. Or no taste chicken? No. We got a right. I got a right. Two chicken and right. Nobody does chicken like we do with the Colonel's secret blend of herbs and spices. It's finger licking good. Kentucky Fried Chicken, they do chicken right. You are looking at the most advanced shock absorber that Monroe has ever made. 
Gasmatic. So advanced that in testing, people preferred the Gasmatic ride three to one over conventional shocks. The difference was dramatic in the control, the stability, and the comfort. A ride so superior, if Gasmatics don't give you the best ride ever, we'll replace them no charge. Monroe Gasmatic shocks and struts for the best ride ever. Guaranteed. From Anheuser-Busch, here's L.A. Great taste and half the alcohol of our regular beers. You've shaped this world and changed it. Made it better, rearranged it. In the way you think and what you drink and everything you do. L.A. For smooth taste and drinkability and only half the alcohol of our regular beers. For the way you live your life today. For the way. Olympic gold medalist Howard Davis wants to take the title from undefeated champ Edwin Rosario live. Plus a special Olympic track and field report on ABC's Wide World of Sports Saturday. Tiger Stadium in Detroit where the Tigers are trailing the Yanks 2 to 1. We want to pass along our condolences to the family of former catcher Jim Hegan, longtime major leaguer. And a coach who has a lot of friends with these two ball clubs in particular, his son Mike, former player, broadcaster now with the Milwaukee Brewers, Jim Hegan, passing away yesterday at the age of 63. Great catcher. Chet Lemon in the bottom of the fifth inning takes outside, ball one. Update the USFL. Action for you at halftime, Oklahoma, Michigan, tied at 14, and San Antonio leading Houston by 13 at the half. Necro starting to fall behind a few hitters now. And behind here now, three balls and no strikes on Lemon. It's unusual. He started off, uh, Chet Lemon, with a slider. Instead of the knuckleball. He's been throwing more fastballs and sliders with the Yankees. They didn't want him to throw any in Atlanta last year. Strike here. Of course, Yankee Stadium is a much better park to, to pitch in. And you have that huge center field area. And here you'll see a fastball that gets the bottom part of the strike zone. Again, might be a little bit low. But I would think if you wanted to classify the kind of strike zone that John Hirsch back has tonight, it would be a pitcher's strike zone. Hitters don't like it. They don't know what he's calling balls and what he's calling strikes. It's a difficult strike zone to hit under. And umpires don't like it when a hitter drops that bat and starts running down to first base on him either. That strike zone becomes a, a little bit bigger on the next pitch as well. Well, not always, but. Of course, I, I would kind of say that Chet Lemon is a very enthusiastic. Player. There's a similar pitch that could have been called a strike, but you see him going down to first base. Again, we see a fastball just sinks. Might be a strike in the National League, but we're here in Detroit in the American League. So Lemon is on. That's the second walk. Given up by Necro, and Herndon is the batter. Fouled out in the second inning. Herndon has seen a lot of Negro because Larry spent a lot of time with the San Francisco Giants while Negro was pitching in Atlanta. 0-1. That was pretty good batting average against this old guy. Alex Kravis, third base coach and former Brewer manager. And I'm sure Sparky knows those stats too. That's why Herndon's getting a chance to play them. When I talked to Sparky, we're talking Larry Herndon, who had 20 home runs, 92 RBIs last year. Uh, you wonder how well the Tigers are going to play when he gets hot. Sparky said, here's a guy that he's really capable of having an excellent year. I got to get him on track. Six game lead. Let's see what he can do. Just a quick move to first base. But what you, what uh, Phil Negro does out of that move, he just doesn't stop his hands. Sometimes it goes right to home plate. A very tough motion to get a quick jump from first base on. Well, what it is, it's really cheap. Because something you're supposed to come to a one-second pause. Well, he paused there. 
but most of the time as you said he doesn't do that and uh, umpires will let you get away with a few things out there. He didn't pause for a full second. Watch him again here. See? That's less than one full second. And it's also drilled to center field. But there's a lot of room there. And Griffey makes the catch. About 390 from the plate. One away. Very much coming up. I'm going to take a look in regular speed at how long Negro comes set. Well, we'll see if we can count to 1,001 here. 1,000. No, you can't. About a half a second. I think it's a half a second. Are you sure about that rule? I just thought you had a pause. Well, the umpires say, how, how can you not come to a stop if you deliver to home plate? Well, you don't come to a stop uh, in a windup, and that was almost a windup to me. Here's Bergman taking outside. One ball, no strikes on Dave. It really eliminates a chance for a runner to time a pitcher. He has, he has no chance to steal a base. That's completely legal. You don't have to come to a stop to go to first base. Of course, you have to give Phil Necro a lot of credit because historically it's very easy to run off of knuckleball pitches because of the speed of the, of the knuckleball, not to mention the difficulty of the catcher receiving it. And the big love, as we showed you before, this combination has not been particularly easy to steal against. And the one time they've tried tonight, they got him. Gibson, fourth inning. Center field again. Griffey. That one about 385. So Herndon and Bergman combined as the throw comes in. Lemon gets back to first base, but Herndon and Bergman both hit him deep and hit him to center or thereabouts. And that's deadly in this part. Two down. Well, Lemon had thoughts of tagging and going there, but Griffey showed a pretty good arm on that throw into second base. And not necessarily known for a good arm. Barbaro Garbe grounded out in the third inning. Number nine hitter for the Tigers. Knuckler for a strike. I think Lemon in a situation would have go if you get the jump. If he gets a jump off the Negro, he'll go. If he can't seem to figure him out, he'll stay at first base. Cuba came over on the Freedom Flotilla in 1980. Good looking hitter. I wonder why the, excuse me, Ali, wonder why the Tigers have the best record in baseball. They've added Garbay, they've added Dave Bergman, added Rupert Jones, added Willie Hernandez, who's done a great job for him in the bullpen. Darryl Levins. And they won 92 games last year. I think the, the probably most insightful thing that Sparky said was I looked at our record last year. We lost 27 games that we had leads going into the seventh or eighth innings. Figured if I could help our bullpen, we'd win more games. And they certainly have. And Hernandez trade was a big one. And they, they got Bergman in that same deal, too. They gave up Glenn Wilson and John Wackenfuss. And they're two pretty good players. I was very impressed with Glenn Wilson, and he's done a nice job over in Philadelphia. John Wackenfuss. Bus was of course a great guy to platoon against left-handed pitching. Rounded toward the hole, Meacham is there to plug it up and over to Randolph to retire the side. At the end of five, it's still two to one, Yankees. And we'll be back at Tiger Stadium with more after this word from your local stations. She's sexy. She's unpredictable. She's Delia. She's back on Ryan's Hope. A questionable move by the Pistons today, the day before the NBA draft, as they get a player they've been looking for. But what a price they pay. The story following the Tigers game. General Motors employees, the choice is yours. Isn't it time you saved more with a different dental program? Dental Care Network. Highest quality. More complete dental coverage at low cost. 
No charge for most covered services. No limit on number of visits. No lengthy waiting for orthodontic services. Your choice of modern private offices near you. For top quality, more complete coverage at low cost, the smart choice is Dental Care Network. The Olympians, that tough breed of steel-belted radials from Kmart, warranted to go the distance. Made by Uniroyal, Olympian's aggressive European all-season tread takes every grueling mile in stride. And now you can get the Olympian with its 60,000-mile warranty at a very generous price, as low as $41. Go with the Olympians by Uniroyal, priced by Kmart and tough in the long run. Kmart, we've got it, and we've got it good. Tomorrow's weather, tonight on Channel 7 Action News at 11. Back at Tiger Stadium, big crowd looking on in Detroit. Yankees on top, two to one, taking the lead with a run in the top of the fifth inning. And we welcome those of you who have been watching the game between Texas and California at Anaheim. That's the story here. The totals through five. Yankees on top, two to one. Yankees scoring in the first inning on a single by Randolph and a double by Mattingly. Kirk Gibson hit a home run for the Tigers to tie the game 1-1 in the bottom of the first inning. And then the Yankees took the lead in the fifth when Randolph doubled, moved to third on a single by Butch Weiniger, who now has a 16-game hitting streak. And Willie scored on a sacrifice fly by Mattingly, the league's leading hitter. So Mattingly has driven in both Yankee runs. The Tigers come in leading Toronto by six, leading Baltimore by 11 and a half, leading the Yankees by 19 as we go to the sixth inning. Dave Winfield, one for two tonight, to be followed by Steve Kemp and Roy Smalley. Al Michaels with Earl Weaver, Jim Palmer on a warm night in Tiger Town. Home plate umpire, John Hirschbeck, consulting for the moment with Wilcox. We're missing Chet Lennon, Lemon in center field. I think that's the reason for the delay. Lemon was aboard the vacant area in center right now where Lemon would normally be patrolling and here he comes so no injury. Lemon had been on base in the bottom of the fifth inning and was out at second on a force play to end the bottom of the fifth. So Dave Winfield to lead things off in the sixth inning who's been very hot. Winfield Came in second in the league as the Yankees have the two top hitters, Mattingly one and Winfield two, and his average up two points to 338. Bill Wilcox, his numbers through five, six strikeouts, season high for Bill. And he has struck out Camp twice. To follow Winfield. So here we go in the top of the sixth inning. Breaking pitch missing outside, ball one. Well, Dave Winfield's a ball player that can do it all. He can run, he can throw from the outfield, he can run down a fly ball, he hits for average, and he can hit that three run homer. Popped up, mile high, right side. Lou Whitaker making the catch. Send you Angel Ranger viewers back to Don Drysdale. One away here in the sixth inning, and Steve Kemp, the batter, struck out twice. really something now that you would not see Steve Kemp do very regularly three or four seasons ago. Tough man to strike out. Very aggressive. Yet pretty good contact hitter. Tonight he's just thrown the fastball kind of right by him. Made good pitches with it but the first time up he threw him a belt high fastball and he just didn't get to it and then he made a good pitch with his fastball low and away. But he was ahead in the count and now he's dropped behind one ball no strikes. 
what's really odd is, as you say, in, in the past he doesn't strike out or hasn't struck out that much, and yet he takes some vicious swings, and it's uh, it's not that odd to see that helmet popping off. Now, as I said, very aggressive. Of course, was struck below the eye last year in Milwaukee towards, the, I guess, the beginning of September. He said he's not does not see the ball as well as he used to. Three balls, no strikes, the count. I think it's something you really never know what it's like to contend with, but I was talking to some of the Yankee players, and they were talking about Toby Hara, who came over from Cleveland, having a tough time dealing with the pressure of playing in New York. And you just wonder if that didn't get to Steve Kemp with a big contract with the fact that they expected him to come along and do all the things he did in either Chicago or here in Detroit. There he is at first base now with one out, and Smalley is the batter. You're right. The, the pressure in New York is different under the circumstances. Not only the media attention, but because of the management of the ball club. George Steinbrenner is as well known an owner as any in professional sports. He has been, I guess, all things considered, relatively quiet this season as opposed to years past. But of yeah. late, some of the moves have started to be made in terms of in the last day, uh, the coaching maneuvers. That's not being quiet hell right there, the coaching maneuvers. We get the feeling from talking to their players, they really enjoy playing for Yogi Berry. He puts their name down and lets them play. But all the behind the scenes things really distract them. Well, who was it? A couple of the guys felt that when Steinbrenner came out and indicated, as you look at Berry, that Billy Martin might be coming back for a fourth term. Some of the guys indicated the they didn't want Martin back, and maybe that spurred him on. Well, Don Baylor said specifically, some of us want out of here if he comes back. And I think that's a pretty meaningful statement because Don Baylor, along with Winfield, are the kind of guys that you build a team around and look for towards to lead the ball club. Well, the way I understand uh, stood the statement, uh, Donnie didn't say that uh, some of us would want out. He said some players would want out. I don't think he uh, took the total thing on himself. There he is sitting there. Looks right. like he included himself in that group of us. Well, you're probably right again. Here's the one-two pitch. That's fouled away. The Yankees have made a number of managerial moves, as Earl mentioned earlier, as you look at the wave again, rolling around the confines of Tiger Stadium. Yankees have even made some moves in years they've won pennant in midseason. Last time they did it, 1981, when Gene Michael was canned and Bob Lemon took over, and they wound up winning the pennant. And down he goes. And a sinker as Smalley strikes out for the second time, and that's seven strikeouts now for Wilcox. And again, we saw the split fingered fastball that has really accounted for about four of those seven strikeouts. Fastball that looks like our pitch. It looks like a fastball. It's down in the zone, and the bottom drops out. A very difficult pitch to to hit. Ball comes up to home plate, looking like a fastball, and just falls away from the left-handed hitters into the right-handed hitters. Griffey takes inside. Ball one, one and zero. Now Bergman's playing off the bag at first base, and they're giving Kemp a little bit of room. Seems like he could get that base if he wanted it. Because I think something that should be said in fairness to George Steinbrenner, the bottom line of why the Yankees are 19 games out is a lot of the players are not producing up to their capabilities. In spite of the distractions or whatever, they have guys that he expected to play better, and they're not doing it. In the air to left field. And it's Herndon making the catch to retire the side. No runs, no hits, and the man left on. We're at Tiger Stadium in the middle of the sixth inning where the Yankees lead Detroit. Two to one. When you buy a new car, you want to keep it looking new. And that's easy with Armor All Protectant. A scientific formula that took a polymer chemist 10 years to develop. It helps keep rubber, vinyl, leather, and plastic looking new. So even though you can't keep your car from getting old, you can keep it from looking old. 
armor on. It's science, but it works like magic. Shape up your waist. Shape up your thighs. Shape up your homeowner's insurance. Homeowner's insurance? Now's the time to shape up your homeowner's insurance at Allstate. Just bring in your policy and compare. We'll do everything we can to save you money. And with an Allstate Shape Up and Save discount, you may qualify for additional savings of up to 15%. So run on in and save. Shape up and save. It's okay if you just drive in. You're in good hands with Allstate. Here you go, Tommy. You know, this new L.A. Manheiser-Busch is quite a beer. Naturally aged, smooth. It tastes great. Real, uh, you know, drinkability. See, the way I figured it, with only half the alcohol of the regular beers, there'd be certain times when L.A. beer would be a really good idea. Boy, was I wrong. Get around to L.A., Jim. These guys think it's a good idea anytime. For the way you live, L.A. It's a whole new brand of beer enjoyment. The United States Olympic trials continue with explosive track and field competition. See gold medal hopefuls Carl Lewis and the amazing Edwin Moses, plus many more, Thursday night on ABC. Only other game going in the American League right now, Texas, with Frank Tavano working, leading 6-0 in the seventh inning. Gary Ward is over. Other two games, Kansas City at Oakland, Chicago at Seattle, getting underway shortly. And the only game in the National League, Cardinals Montreal rained out. A reminder, following your late local news nightline, tonight a report on the world's first test tube orphans. That's the subject with Ted Koppel, immediately following your late local news. Lou Whitaker. He leads off in the bottom of the sixth inning. Taking low from Negro. Yankees on top. Two to one. Top of the order with Whitaker, Trammell, and Gibson. Up high. Negro doing a good job. As Jim mentioned before, Yogi would love to get as much as he can out of Negro tonight. The Yankees minus Dave Rigetti for at least the next two weeks going on the disabled list because of the cut index finger sustained in the bullpen yesterday against the water cooler. 3-0. I think Yogi would like to get nine out of Nico tonight. I really wonder who he's going to go to yesterday in a ball game. Dennis Rasmussen on the mound. Two to two ball game with Gary Renicki up. He had Jose Rijo in the bullpen who's one and six on the year. Shane Raleigh from the left hand side who's had a tired arm really since the middle of spring training. So he doesn't have a whole lot of buttons to push out there and hope that he's going to get positive results. That's drilled and it's a base hit and maybe more but Winfield goes into the corner to cut it off. Whitaker takes the turn and Dave fires it back in. So Lou Whitaker serenaded again by the familiar Lou is at first base. Well, here's the pitch. The ball's hit hard right over the first baseman's head. And we'll show how valuable Winfield is. We can see how far he is away from the ball right here. Looks like it might be a double. His speed got him there in time. And his strong arm stopped Whitaker at first base. We'll get it from the rooftop again. And again, we get to see how far he is away from the ball. He slipped even and come up and made a good throw to second base. Trammell mired in a slump 0 for 2 tonight. Takes a strike. Trammell won for his last 25. Boy, that'll do some damage to your average. Yes, it will. I don't really think the sacrifice was on there either. I think Trammell was trying to bunt for the base hit at the same time get his man in scoring position. He has Smalley up even with a bag. That's a knuckleball for a strike. One and two now. And those aren't lose. And as we said last Monday night, when you fake a bunt on the first pitch, what you do is bring the third baseman in, Roy Smalley, and it just makes it easier if you're going to eventually swing away to hit the ball by him. Gets him. So Trammell really mired in it now and trying to shake it. Has struck out twice tonight. And Necro has struck out five in the game. One down, and here is Gibson. 
We talk about that knuckleball being hard to hit. It's also hard for John Hirschbeck, the umpire, to call because it comes up to home plate, looks like a strike. All of a sudden, the bottom falls out of it. I would imagine this is really, I think, his second year as an American League umpire. He has not seen a whole lot of knuckleballers in the minor leagues. They do have a good point there, though. Michigan leading by 11 now, trying to clinch the playoff spot. San Antonio leading Houston by six, third quarter. In the dirt to get some. One and oh. Yankees, two to one. First time the Yankees have faced the Tigers this season. Tomorrow, the Yankees going with Ron Guidry. Tigers are going to go with Carl Willis, who we saw last Monday in relief in Toronto. And because of the injury to Jack Morris, Sparky is high on him. Too. He says he's one of the few Davis. young pitchers that they've had in Detroit since he's been here, which is 1979. Even though he's only really pitched one minor league season, that comes up with an idea of how to pitch. He says it's very refreshing. He wish he could have more of them. I think my I think the only problem that I could perceive for Carl Willis is he's a two pitch pitcher and as Earl will testify sinker slider he might be good the first and second time around the order but the third time as Sparky said I'm going right to the bullpen three and oh now the count on Gibson with Parrish on deck and they give him the green light and it's a lazy fly ball to left field where Kemp Makes the catch for the out. So two away with Gibson flying out 3-0. Oh. Well, a lot of people are going to wonder why he swung at that pitch, but uh, you are going to get a fastball on the 3-0, and, oh, and maybe you can put those two runs on the board that could get you ahead. Gibson already had one home run in the game. So that's Sparky's reasoning. You're right. I think over the years, now that I think about it, you may see more green lights 3-0 and oh to, against Nico than than almost anybody out, I'm sure, just for that reason. Well, I was surprised that Lou Whitaker didn't swing at one earlier in the ball game. And I guess also from a manager standpoint, as you did many years, we had a guy we got from the Mexican League, Andres Mora, was probably the best 3-0 hitter that I've ever seen, and I played for almost 20 years. But Earl at least had enough confidence in his ability to do that to let him hit, and it was just amazing how successful he was swinging 3-0. A lot of hitters don't like to do it. They just don't feel comfortable swinging 3 and 0. Lance Parrish, the batter. Knuckleball is inside as he jack nice ball one. Yanks two, Tigers one. Two out, six inning. Whitaker at first. Amazing man on the mound. Classy fellow too. Nice guy. 45 years old. Involved in a lot of charities. He is. Chopper foul. One ball, two strikes. It was a very sad day for him when he was released by Atlanta. Didn't know for a while what he would do. He knew he wanted to pitch. He was released right after the season, and the Yankees wound up making the decision to sign him in January. He was on, on an all-star team that I took to Japan, and I spent some time talking with him. He has managerial aspects, but if he keeps that 1.77 earned run average, it's going to be a long time before he has to think about that. Seeking his 10th win tonight, which would tie him with Dan Petrie back to Jack Morris, who has 11. That's it high in the air to left field, but it will stay in. And coming back in now is Kemp to make the catch to retire the side. So they waste the leadoff single by Whitaker, and we'll go to the seventh inning with the Yankees, two and the Tigers. This year, one out of every six cars will need to have its brakes repaired. That's why at Midas, we offer a free brake inspection. If your car needs work, you know it's being done by experts. 500,000 people a year have their brakes fixed at Midas, and we're glad to have the business. But more important, we appreciate the trust. 
Trust the Midas Touch. IBM presents You Make the Call. With a runner on first base, a pitcher starts from the stretch position and throws the ball. But the umpire spots something wrong and calls time. What did he see? You make the call. When IBM personal computer owners look for good software, where can they turn? To IBM for programs that help you keep up with modern times. Business programs, entertainment, productivity, education, and more. The variety you want with the quality you expect in the growing library of IBM personal computer software. A well-balanced selection at a store near you. Because the pitcher never came to a complete stop in the stretch position before he threw the ball, the umpire called a balk and stopped play. If you said balk, then you made the right call. From Detroit, this ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Budweiser, proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Next week, the 25th of June, next Monday night, San Diego against Los Angeles, definitely, at least as some of you will see that and possibly a second game to be announced later this week. But the Padres-Dodgers will be a definite matchup for us uh, next week from Dodger Stadium. Monday night baseball at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. Bobby Meacham to lead off for the Yankees as we go to the seventh inning. Yankees on top, two to one. Meacham, Randolph, and Weiniger. Bobby is 0 for 2 tonight. Bill Wilcox, seven strikeouts along the way. And he's 0 and 1 with Meacham. Meacham's a pretty good sized boy. I think as you said before, it's a classic example of they don't really care how much he hits if he does a good job playing defensively at shortstop. Down the line, and it is a fair ball bouncing into the corner where Herndon backhands, and Meacham has good speed. Stand up double for him. It's a good pitch, too. Here you see it looks like a split finger fastball low and away. As Earl said, it's an excellent pitch, except he hits it right off the chalk line down the left field line for a double. Fairly fair. Lead off double. Hasn't been easy for Wilcox. He's given up only two runs tonight, but just once as he retired the side in order. That was the third inning. As we talked in his last five games, he has not pitched well in four of them. The one he did pitch well, he got beat by Mike Flanagan two to one. So, as you said, he's really doing his job. A pitcher, when he goes out there, he wants to keep his ball club in the game, and he's certainly done that for into the seventh inning. He's had trouble with New York, too. Lifetime, he's four and ten against the Yankees. He'll get busy in the bullpen with Randolph at the plate, around the butt, taking a strike on one. Randolph didn't think so. Well, Willie's one of the best at working an umpire. You throw that ball low and away, and he says, oh, I think that ball is a little bit low or a little bit outside. He gets a lot of pitches. And there you see Willie Hernandez having a great year for him. We saw him last Monday night come in and get the save for the Tigers against Toronto. Aurelio Lopez is the other guy in the bullpen, the other short man, but he'll probably get the night off because Lopez pitched four innings in relief yesterday at Milwaukee. I'd like to see if Hernandez screwball is as good this week as it was last week. But it's foul and it's no balls and two strikes on Randolph. Bobby Meacham at second base. Looking back over his shoulder at Gene Michael, the third base coach. Oh, and to the count. It's odd that Randolph's bunny here. That graphic illustrates it's 17 for his last 33. It's about as hot as you're going to get. Well, especially when you consider how well he hits the ball the other way to right field. But again, I think Yogi's thinking, getting another run here, and Unicro out there who's pitched so well. 
we have a good chance of winning this game. One hopper to channel, so he won't advance the runner as he pulls it. And Meacham has to stay at second. One away. That wasn't a good 0-2 pitch. And Randolph got good wood on it. I think that's what makes baseball baseball. You make a good pitch, and the guy hits it down the left field line for double. You throw a fastball 0-2 right down the middle, and he hits it right at somebody for an out. And that's the truth. Weiniger. Well, Weiniger's a case in point. Drilled a shot to center for an out in the first inning, and then looped a single in the fifth to extend his hitting streak to 16. And again, you see that little dance that Milt Wilcox does after he releases the ball. I think one of the worst things a pitcher can do is throw the ball towards home, home plate and then recoil. But that little step does, it allows him to let his momentum come towards home plate and take a lot of pressure off his shoulder. He gets everything he's he's got to give on the pitch. Also, it gets him in a position to field the ball. Not a classic delivery, but it's gotten a job done for him for a number of years. We have to give him a lot of credit. As we said, he's not overpowering, but he's come up with that split fingered fastball. He has a good breaking ball, which Roger Craig, the pitching coach with the Tigers, said he was trying to get him to throw a little bit harder so he could get more strikes with it. And he moves his fastball in and out. Count is two and one on Weininger. Two and two now. Beach him at second base and one out in the seventh inning. Here's that little hop we're talking about. The only time I ever hopped is when I struck somebody out on a 3 2 fastball. Where a line drive was coming back at your shins. <laughs> I was talking to one uh, Baron Gare who was hit in Baltimore in the head with a line drive. I told him, you got to work on your fielding. If not that, getting out of the way. That's the first thing. Number one thing if your pitcher is to get out of the way, and number two is to try to catch it. Popped up. Trammel calling for it. Leininger is the second out in the seventh inning. Each him at second base with two down now. And we'll see Don Mattingly, who has driven in both Yankee runs, doubled in the first, sacrifice fly in the fifth. One for two. And if I'm pitching Al with first base open, even though it's a calculated risk because the guy coming up next, Don Baylor, certainly isn't a cinch out. You have the league's leading hitter up there. You got to pitch very carefully, and I think they're going to walk him intentionally. He hears you. So they'll walk Mattingly. When you're that hot and you're leading the league, even though you do have a Don Baylor on deck, you'll take your chances. And as you said, Jim, last year, and you pointed it out to Baylor, he was 100 points better against left handers than righties. Well, it's not a, a move that I like to do as a pitcher because what happens if you make a mistake to Don Baylor, who's got 13 home runs, you're out of the ball game. But it's a it's a it's a move, and Earl will testify to this that you have to make if you're a manager to try to keep your club in the game and play the percentages. It's a gutty move by a manager because Baylor breaks it up right here. He's got to answer a lot of questions after the game. My philosophy always has been as a pitcher. If Mattingly singles you're down three to one you have a you're pitching for a team that's leading the, the league in run scored. If he hits a home run now you got to come up with five runs to win. And you can see Sparky's concerned. Don Baylor hitting 256. 13 home runs. 35 runs better in. And he pumps it up. So the strategy will work. With Whitaker right there. No run, one hit. And the Yankees leave a couple. End of six and a half. New York two, Detroit one. Time. It takes time to create quality. The quality taste of Budweiser. Time to select the choicest ingredients. For exclusive Beechwood aging. To brew the distinctively clean, crisp taste of Budweiser. Quality taste. That's what people want in a cold glass of beer. And this is the one they want. Somebody still cares about quality. Camaro. More beauty. And a lot more beast. Performance. That's today's Chevrolet.
That was a game-saving act. This is a life-saving act. Hi, I'm Bruce Benedict. Last year, five million Americans learned something that just might help save a life someday. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR. If you don't know how to perform CPR, call the American Heart Association or the American Red Cross. Baseball cares, and you should too. This message was furnished by Major League Baseball in cooperation with the Players Association. Darrell Evans will lead things off for Detroit going to the bottom of the seventh inning. Then we'll see Chet Lemon and Larry Herndon. Five, six, and seven hitters against Phil Necro. Well, Evans has struck out twice, but if they get if Necro gets one in the wrong place, it's all tied up. Doug Bear is throwing in the Detroit bullpen. Earlier, Hernandez had been up there just to be getting some work, perhaps. Hernandez has already come into the dugout with his jacket on. It's conceivable Sparky would go to him in the next inning. We'll see. Outside to Evans, ball one. One and oh. We saw that graphic with Darrell Evans getting off to a great start, hitting 300 first 20 games or so, and then struggling. Since then, I think one theory that you could have possibly is that they did not know him, pitchers in the American League coming over from the National League. And also, early in the year in April and May, it's hard to throw a lot of breaking balls. You have to throw a lot of fastballs. And you see that's ball three, something the Negro doesn't want to do, get behind of it. And when early in the year, you can't throw that breaking ball over. You got to throw a lot of fastballs. He's a good low ball hitter. That's a strike. One thing about Evans, he's in a slump right now, but he's the kind of guy that when he gets out, he takes you right with him for about two weeks. Well, the pitchers didn't know him, but he does. He doesn't know the pitchers easy either, which evens it up. Round in and bobbled by Mattingly. No play. to see it again and I don't care how good a fielder you are at first base and Madden is a good fielder. He could have laid back on that ball and got a big hop rather than charging it that fast and getting it on a short hop. It's a play where you just let your pitcher cover first base make sure you catch the ball and give him a decent throw. Tommy Brookins goes in to run now. That's an error charge to Mattingly. So Brookins pinch running here in the seventh inning. And Lemon grounded on and walked is the batter. Hitting 304. One and no the count. One of the things Battingland might have been thinking about it. Number one, he doesn't know how fast or how slow Daryl Evans is, and it's a reflex play. One of the difficult things about playing in the American League where you see sometimes months and months between seeing teams is really being able to scout them. You don't know a lot of their strengths and weaknesses. Well, Necro's falling behind again, 2-0. Oh. They might be getting some fastballs to hit here directly, but I really don't care uh, whether you know the speed of the runner or not. I think that was a careless error, one that didn't have to be made. In the air to shallow right center field, and it's Winfield making the catch. Brookings still at first base and one gone now in the seventh inning. And Larry Herndon is the batter. Fouled out and fly to center. Herndon batting 247 as he comes up. As we talk, Phil Necro is falling behind a lot of the Tiger hitters, but what he's been able to do. In a 2 0 3 1 situation, is make good pitches with his fastball. Excellent pitches with his fastball. That one was right on the outside corner. I think, again, that exemplifies what control means. Throwing 77 miles per hour, maybe not even that quickly. And if you make good pitches, you can be effective. Well, as many, many pitches as he's thrown at that home plate, and the length of time he's been there, he should be able to put it right where he wants to, and he has tonight. He's walked two, he struck out five. Tigers have had the leadoff man on in each of the last four innings. But their only run was 
a two-out first inning home run by Gibson. I think Sparky saw Earl's pregame show where he talked about power hitting. He's been sitting back waiting for the long ball. Had to get one out of Hernan, as you say, last year 20 home runs for Larry. This year none. Hasn't hit one since last September 28th. Well, that's going to change because this guy is a good hitter. He has good plate coverage, better low ball hitter than high ball hitter. Has good power to right field, pretty good breaking ball hitter. There's one pitch I would say you had you could get Larry Herndon out with. That's a slow curveball. The Negro doesn't throw that. You saw the graphic. Graphic the last time up, he was hitting 308 lifetime. Up. Good stats against Negro. Herndon, for the Giants for many years, was not a power hitter. They wanted him to hit home runs. He didn't start hitting them until he came here in 82. Of course, the park here might have something to do with that. If I characterize Herndon, he's more or less a power alley hitter. He hits the ball to right center, left center, and 365 to left, 370 to right. That's in the air to shallow right field. And it's Winfield with Randolph right there making the catch. Really going way out, and Winfield is falling for it. And there are two down. Well, we had a near collision here, and it's something that's going to happen in baseball when both uh, players are going all out to catch the ball. At the last minute, we could see Winfield holler for the ball and take it. Dave Bergman is the batter. Two down. Brookins at first base. Pinch running for Evans. Yanks on top. Two to one. What a no. Bergman hitting 291. Pop foul. Weininger giving chase, slides, and makes. Did he make the catch? I believe he did, but no, says the plate umpire. Hirschbeck, who may have said it made contact with a wall, as we looked at it right below us, it looked like Weininger had made the catch. Great effort, nonetheless. Well, one thing about uh, the play, you'll watch. Uh, the umpire Hirschbeck get right over there with him. You can see the wall. The only way he can make an attempt is to slide in it. He stopped himself with his foot. Hard to see on the replay whether he caught it or not. And we can see that Hirschbeck was just a little bit late getting there. Well, might have popped out of his glove and made contact with the padding. That's Yogi Berra out to plead the case. Take another look at it now. Get to look at it from another angle. Then we see him go down and slide. Looked like it went right into the glove. Then it might. It looked like it starts to pop out and maybe makes contact with that padding, possibly. What a play, though. A real tough play, too. There's a little drainage ditch also that he had to be concerned with as he came over. One of the difficult things that the umpire had to contend with is the size of the glove. He's using that oversized glove because of the knuckleball. Hard to see whether the ball was either trapped against the wall or just caught cleanly. One one to Bergman, and he grounds it down to first. That's a fair ball, and Mattingly makes the play unassisted. So no damage is done. Leadoff man gets aboard, and he is stranded at first. Through seven full at Tiger Stadium, still Yanks two, Detroit one. A new design in radial tires is rolling your way from Goodyear. It's L.A. Great taste and half the alcohol of our regular. Medalist Howard Davis wants to take the title from undefeated champ Edwin Rosario live. Plus a special Olympic track and field report on ABC's Wide World of Sports Saturday. Willie Hernandez comes in to pitch for the Detroit Tigers. The left-hander with a good screwball acquired from Philadelphia just prior to the start of the season. 2-0, 2.09 ERA and 48 strikeouts in 56 innings. So he has done the job for Sparky Anderson as we update you on the USFL action taking place. Michigan coming from behind, leading Oklahoma handily. And Houston by a point over San Antonio in the third quarter. In the bullpen for the Yankees, just getting in some work right now is Bob Shirley. Pitched well Friday, Friday night against the Orioles, but lost. Lost two to one. 
Another game winning RBI by Eddie Murray. The base hit in the ninth inning. So he's just throwing between starts here. As Dave Winfield leads things off in the eighth inning. Winfield, one for three. Willie Hernandez, as you said, 48 strikeouts and over 50 innings. The most impressive thing, he's only walked 14 batters, but he doesn't throw that hard. Gets under that one a little bit. Of course, it's the first pitch. Has the great screwball. Two kinds of fastballs. He runs one in on the right-handers and one away from them. And a little bit of a slider. So he's got four pitches to look at, and he can throw them pretty much when he's effective where he wants to. Last week he showed us uh, one of the best screwballs that I've seen in a long, long while. I yeah, like Mike Quare. Very effective. Oh, three and one now the count. Hernandez is leading the American League in appearances. This is number 30 for him. Dan Quisenberry with 29. And as you can see, he has been really tough of late. He's facing a guy that doesn't like to walk. And he rips it to right field. That's a base hit. And Tarum's off the shin of Gibson, but he keeps it in the neighborhood and holds him for one. Two hits tonight for Winfield, who came in hitting 336. Here we see a 3-1 fastball. Winfield, as most power hitters like, like to to get their arms out. Smacks it to right field. You can see the ball kind of carry him off. Looks like Kirk Gibson's right or left hand. Keeps the ball in front of him, though, to hold him to a single. That ball was uh, hit like a three-wood shot. It seemed to rise. As, well, Winfield hit Al Clark, out the one, of the, one of the American League umpires, with a line drive behind first base last year. And I think Al Clark was out for a month. He gets his arms extended. The ball really jumps off his bat. I'd be bunting here. Well, he didn't in the fourth inning with first and second, and nobody out. Wound up striking out. Earl Weaver definitely mellowing in his mid 50s. Would be bunting, huh? Well, you got that pitcher out there with a 1.77 earned run average. Bill Necro try to get him that extra run. You got a guy at the plate who's not hitting a lick either right now. Kemp is over his last 16. Well, my main reason was left-hander against left-hander, but a lot of times. Of course, we you know, know how well Kemp hits different. left-handers. At least he used to hit the Orioles staff pretty well. Kemp hitting 270 this season against left-handed pitching. Of course, a left-hander with a screwball is a little different left-hander, isn't he? Yes, he is, if that's his best pitch. Of course, then there are left-handers that have screwballs, like Mike Quayer, who would, didn't feel comfortable throwing into left-hander. If you throw so many down and away to a right-hander, it's not a particularly good pitch to a left-handed hitter. A little broken bat squibber fielded by Trammell, and Winfield gets back to first base. Got the fastball in on a fist. So a soft liner for the out, one gone here in the eighth inning. And now Roy Smalley will come up right-handed for the first time tonight. 0 for 3 facing Wilcox, who went seven innings, gave up two runs. And Milt wound up striking out seven. Smalley hitting 200 as a right-handed hitter this season, six with 30 with one homer. Winfield not a big threat to steal. He does have three stolen bases and if he gets a jump off of him he might be going. You ever think that run in this situation? Well yes. You know I'm not crazy about the hit and run. I'd rather have the run and hit. Uh, but it's it's a spot for it. Stay out of the double play. Two balls, no 
strikes the count. Because let's face it, the Yankees have been struggling scoring runs. Of course, they got caught up with the Oriole pitching staff. They scored one run on Friday night, only two on Sunday. Did score eight on on Saturday, but didn't hit the ball particularly hard. Do you think they'd like to get another runner in scoring position? Well, this is a pitch I'd like. I, I used to like to hit and run on. I didn't like 2 and 0 because if it was a high fastball, I didn't want my hitter swinging at that pitch when it could be 3 and 0. 2 and 1, the pitcher still trying to throw a strike. One out. We're in the eighth inning. Yankees on top, 2 to 1. They've out hit the Tigers 8 to 3. Dave Winfield held on by Bergman off to his lead at first. is on deck. There's Ken. He was one for three tonight. not hit particularly hard. Trammell went a long way for it though. Gives a good throw to second base. There was no chance for two on the play whatsoever. Now Griffey at the plate facing Hernandez for the first time. And he drills it to deep right field and down the line it is hooking and it is a foul ball. Game of inches. And not by much. Like a little slider, not a particularly good pitch. Cloud, it looked fair from here, but just inside the foul ball. Mm. Better angle here, I think, to tell. Yeah. No doubt. That was a very bad pitch. Slider hanging on the inside <laughs> half of the plate. Would even have been worse if it had been fair. Oh, the job. Same pitch in a better spot. That takes some nerve. I just always looked at, and here you see the breaking ball. He gets it down and away where he wants it. Actually looked a little bit low for strike two. And the 0-2 pitch. Dropped down on him. Foul back. Well, Griffey hangs in there. You don't. You're not a lifetime 300 hitter if you can't hit left-handers. I've always felt his power is is more on the low fastball and, and occasionally a breaking ball. That's why I said before I felt Wilcox would go away from him because it, it limits his ability to hit home runs. One left-hander he's destroyed through the years is Tommy John of the Angels. Again, he drops down with a fastball this time, and it's Whitaker taking the play of the system. The story for the Yankees in the eighth, and the Tigers come up in the bottom of the inning, trailing New York two to one. Mixing cement. It's a dusty. Still coming up for you Thursday night at eight Eastern time. U.S. Olympic track and field trials already underway at the L.A. Coliseum. So we'll have some live events for you Thursday. Also, as you look at Brian Day taking over in left field. Look back at Carl Lewis, who has made the team in the hundred. Edwin Moses is. He attempts to continue that incredible winning streak. Coming up Thursday night, Omar Moreno, you took a look at him now in center as the Yankees make their defensive changes. Trying to help Negro protect a 2-1 to -one lead as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Barbaro Garbe, the number nine hitter, then we'll see Whitaker and Tremel. 
against Phil Necro, who's looking for his 10th win of the season and 278th of his career. Outside the Garvey ball one. I really get the feeling that this is his game to win or lose. Yankees have had no action in their pen. Again, a slider looked like two in a row. Again, he falls behind. He's only walked two, however, tonight. Struck out five. Under it and pops it up. Meacham. That's that for Garvey. One out. Three hits off Necro. Necro. That's a, that's very interesting and revealing and augments what Jim mentioned before in terms of the slow starts Necro gets off to normally. In 69, it's 15 years since Necro has won 10 before the first of July, and it's only what's the 18th of June. He can win. Maybe 12 by the 1st of July, the way he's going. Well, the way he's pitching and the way the Yankees bats, even though they haven't scored the last three or four days, but that has something to do with the pitching they faced. They were in home run a couple of years ago when the Braves won the division title. 1982 in a very key game in San Diego last weekend of the season. Three and one. It'll be interesting to see whether he throws Lou Whitaker a fastball, as we said. Who's capable of hitting that pitch out? So let's see what he does. Strike here, the count is full. Three and two. Slider in a perfect spot. Either that or a knuckleball, but it was an excellent pitch. He's just, he's not doing exactly what you'd want to do, which is to get behind the hitters, but when he does, he's been able to make good pitches. And the three two, he struck him out. That's six. Strikeouts now for Phil Necro and the two down in the eighth inning. Alan Trammell comes up, 0 for 3 tonight. Elsewhere, Texas 6, California 1 as they go to the ninth at Anaheim. Kansas City and Oakland are underway. Nothing, nothing there, and nothing, nothing at the Kingdom. White Sox facing the Mariners. Montreal again rained out against St. Louis. 1 0, the count to Trammell. Now time is called. Looks like Jeff Torboard going to the mound. Former manager of the Indians and one of the Yankee pitching coaches. Well, I don't know if this is a good time to slow a pitcher like Necro up right now. He's he's going after the hitters one at a time, one pitch at a time. He's showing a lot of emotion on the mound. He wants to get him himself. Meanwhile, Ray Fontenot joins Rio in the Yankee bullpen. There he is, one of the left-hander who began the year in the starting rotation. Yogi Berra watching his club. Out in front, two to one. There's Gene Michael, a former Yankee manager, and Lou Pinella, who retired Saturday. Strike for travel. One and one. Lou Pinell, of course, is a Yankee coach. That's the reason he's in the dugout. He's even while he was playing, he was the Yankee hitting instructor. One ball, two strikes now. I asked Lou which Yankee hitters he was working with. He said Don Mattingly and Dave Winfield. Certainly. <laughs> Line to center field. That's Marino coming in, and he fades on it and makes the catch to retire the sides. So the Tigers in the bottom of the ninth will have Gibson, Parrish, and Evans coming up. But the Yankees will come to bat in the top of the inning, leading by a score of two to one, and we'll be back in Detroit after this word from your local stations. Two frozen embryos whose would-be parents have died. USFL, Michigan, leading Oklahoma as they battle for a playoff spot. 
34 17. That game is taking place not far from here at the Silverdome. Scoreboard in the stadium had it wrong before. San Antonio 23, Houston 21 in the fourth quarter. And a surprise. USFL action coming up at 2 30 this Sunday, final weekend of the regular season. White Sox came up with four in the top of the first inning. Richard Dotson working against Matt Young in that one. Four nothing Chicago. Bottom of the first inning in Seattle. Here, as you look at the other scores, Texas leading California, KC and Oakland, no score. Here it's two to one. The Yankees on top as we go to the ninth inning. And Willie Hernandez trying to keep it close, facing Bobby Meacham, Willie Randolph, and Butch Weiniger. You look at that Chicago White Sox team last year. They read, led the majors with 800 runs. Uh, Charlie Lau no longer is with us. Passed away in the winter, and they've been struggling offensively. I think one of the finest hitting coaches that I ever saw in baseball. I'm sure they really miss him. Yes, they do. But uh, Greg Luzinski isn't giving them the power they need right now, and neither is Carlton Fisk. Also, remember last year, even though the White Sox won by a mile, they didn't break it open until very late in the year. Fly ball to right field. And it's Gibson. Retiring Meacham. On the way. Willie Randolph will be the batter again for late tuners in. Local news will be following. And then night line here in Detroit as we are in the ninth inning. Yankees got a run in the first. And Detroit countered on a home run by Gibson. But it's been all Negro since. And the Yankees added a run in the fifth inning on a double by Randolph single by Weiniger and fly ball by Mattingly. That's the difference. That one is stroked to right and right into Gibson's glove by Randolph and Gibson had a little bit of trouble with that one. Again he seemed to be troubled by the lights. Well, I've always felt they had the best lights here. Of course I've never played right field so I wouldn't know if they're in your eyes when you go after a fly ball or a line drive. But I definitely think that I've always kind of wished that they would have a couple of bulbs burn out when I pitched here. The hitters see the ball extremely well here. Well, there's almost as many balls lost in the lights at night as there are in the sun in the daytime. Weiniger pops it up into shallow left field. Quick inning as Rammel makes the catch. Three up and three down. We'll take a station break for our local stations. That's coming up here. As we go to the bottom of the ninth inning, score still New York 2, Detroit 1, and we'll be back after this from our local station. She's sexy, she's unpredictable, she's Delia, she's back on Ryan's home. Ibera has been a somewhat embattled man this season, the manager of the Yankees with his team 19 games back, and I talked to Lawrence Peter Berra before the game. What about for you now, a couple of months into the season, you're under the microscope as any manager in New York is all of the rumors all of the Yogi is out Yogi's in this and that everything that swirls around the New York manager no matter who he is. How have you adapted to it over the past couple of months and your feelings about your situation right now. Well I just go to the ballpark every day. You know, I'm, I'm still there. Uh, that's all I know. And uh, it doesn't bother me that much. It really doesn't. You know that's uh, every manager's mind I guess. Uh, you're hard to be fired up <laughs> with uh, what this game's about. And, uh, and I'm enjoying managing. I, I really do. You know, we lost a tough, uh, tough one yesterday to Baltimore. We'll get his out for 15 days now. That's going to be pretty tough, too, for us right there. And, uh, and it's like you said, the managing point, you do the best you can. That's all you can do now. And tonight, the best he can has been good enough through eight. Through eight and a half, in fact. Two to one as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Al Michaels, Jim Palmer, Earl Weaver with you from Detroit. Our thanks to Alan Roth for, as usual, a super job up here in the booth with the numbers. Steve Hurt with the graphics information from downstairs as you look at Bill Necro working on Gibson in the bottom of the ninth inning. Gibson a home run in the first, a single in the fourth, and then he flied out two for three. Makes low of ball one. And now if you were gonna ask somebody what makes a pitcher successful, probably three of the criteria would be velocity, movement, and location. 
Phil Necro throwing 77 miles per hour when he throws his fastball. Certainly doesn't have that. But he has been all night, been able to locate the ball where he wants to. And the knuckleball been moving. He's uh, Yeah, he's got a lot of movement on that knuckleball. And he keeps falling behind. This has been a pattern for him tonight. He's behind here 2-0, and oh, and yet his control hasn't cost him. Two walks, six strikeouts through eight. And Gibson pops it up in foul ground that may be playable, and it will be for Smalley. One out. So Gibson on a 2-0 pitch fouls out. Parrish is the batter. Boy, what would they have done without Negro this season? Looking for his 10th win. Executive producer, ABC Sports Food Arledge, Dennis Lewin producing tonight's game, directed by Chet Forty, pregame feature produced by Peter Lasser, technical director Leslie Weiss, associate director John Bassoni, assistant to the producer Elise Backus. And Kelly Drysdale, owner of the Big D, helping us out in the booth as well. Outside, ball one. You get behind in a two-to-one ball game, you know you got to go right after that hitter because you don't want to bring that winning run to the plate. Not the corner. You know, if Negro does not give up a run in this inning, his ERA will be 171. That'll be best in the league. He'll move ahead of Storm Davis of Baltimore. Foul ball. One and two. Evans, uh, the, the designated hitter, Brookings went in to pinch run for him, so they need a DH, and Grubb is out on deck. You know, with a fastball pitcher in the ninth inning, a lot of times he's lost a lot off that fastball, but that knuckleball will keep dancing all the way through. Well, that's Johnny what we talk Grubb. about movement. There you see John Grubb. He thanked me for glorifying him last Monday night by calling him one of the my toughest outs and one of the world's greatest hitters. I told him, I said, you may not go to the real Hall of Fame, but you're in mine. <laughs> One ball, two strikes to count on Parrish. And he pops it up. Mattingly wants it. Two out. Tigers with three hits tonight. Gibson hit that home run in the first. Then a base hit by him in the fourth. Whitaker singled to right in the sixth, and that's been it. Well, to be quite honest, you don't win 277 games and possibly 278th here and pitch 4700 innings if you don't have a lot of guts and as we said he hasn't pitched that many complete games this year with Rigetti out there but they certainly needed one tonight and there's really only one batter staying between him and a complete game win and that's Johnny Grubb and as I said a tough out. Steve Carlton has more wins as you look at the Texas California final 6 2 Rangers. Carlton 304 lifetime wins among the active pitchers. Seaver 279. This would be 278 for Negro. Jim Palmer retired for the moment anyway with 268. They all talked, you heard Darrell Evans talk earlier about sitting and waiting. Grubbs waits very well. on deck again a not uncommon situation with Negro three and all he's been three and all on several batters tonight well this is where the, the old axiom Earl used to tell me you can't get beat till you put a man on and the man, man on. just walked down to first base that's the last thing in the world he wanted to do so it sends the winning run to the plate Chet Lemon there's Yogi. Oh, poor Yogi. <laughs> An inglorious entry to the playing surface. Well, I think he's going to leave him in. I think he's going to go out there and ask him how he feels. Of course, I think that's the type of relationship you have with a veteran pitcher like Negro. Of course, you never had that relationship with me. <laughs> you already made up your mind before you got there, which is, I think, probably the right thing to do. Yogi, really, in his mind, should know whether he's going to stay in or not unless he would tell him something to the contrary. 
He stays in with Riho and Fontenot in the bullpen. And Lemon is the batter. Lemon tied for the team lead in home runs with 10. Tonight he has grounded a short walk fly to right. Two out. Ninth inning. 2-1 Yankees. Grub at first. Sparky looks. brings to mind something that Sparky told me before the game. He told his players when he first got here, he said, I'm never going to win a game for you. I'm going to put you in there and uh, put you in a position where you can win it for us. I think this one strike really would hold true if Lemon hits a home run. He's up there with a chance to put another win in the column for the Tigers. And the 1-1 to Lemon is in the dirt. Nico is showing a lot of emotion. He wants it. Trying to go all the way for the third time this season. I think that Phil Necro doesn't know that Larry Herndon over the years has hit him well. It's a tough situation. Three and one, do you throw him a fastball for a strike and take a chance of him hitting a home run? As you said, he has good power. He's hit 10 home runs already this year. It's and now Yogi's got a decision. And he's going to go to the bullpen. Scoreboard says something at the last moment. He's got Herndon, a right-handed batter. He's got Rio, a right-hander. Fontenot is the left-hander in the bullpen. And Negro is going to come out with two out in the ninth inning and the tying and winning runs aboard. So Rio, at age 19, Replaces Negro at age 45. And we'll see if Sparky goes to the bench. Or whether he opts for Herndon here. Ninth inning, game on the line. And we'll be coming back to Detroit in a moment. Top Chevy trucks. Are you tough? Born May 13, 1965. Today, Phil Negro won his first major league game. So he's 19. He native of the Dominican Republic. One and six, one save. As you look at the runners, tying run is Grubb, he's at second. And now, Rusty Kuntz comes in to run for Grubb. So Kuntz is the tying run. And there's the winning run. Lemon at first base. Herndon is the batter. Rio has one save. He saved the game for Nitro in April. He has also walked 28 in 53 innings, so that tells you something about his control. Two on and two out with Herndon at the plate. Pitch ball away, ball one. Definitely overthrew that pitch. Again, the Yankees would love to go to the pen and bring in Rigetti, but he's on the disabled list. So it's Rio to the plate, and Herndon fouls it back, one and one. I think something, of course, here, as we said, Larry Herndon hasn't been hitting pretty well, but he's been sitting up there watching the knuckleball all night. Now you have Jose Rijo, who throws somewhere in the mid-90s. But as you saw, Herndon had a pretty good swing at that 1-0 pitch, mainly because it was a low fastball, and he's a good low ball hitter. He is a little late, though. Here's the 1-1 pitch. That's high. Ball two. Two and one. 92 miles per hour on that last fastball. I would think Jeff Torborg and Yogi would have said, you're going to get beat, get beat on your best pitch, and that's the fastball. Round of the short. That's Meacham shoveling to Randolph, and the Yankees. 
Yankees win it. As Nico at 45 gets the win and Rijo at 19 gets the save. And the Yankees, with the difference being a sacrifice fly by Mattingly in the fifth inning, pulled off by a score of 2-1. to one. Phil Necro, a 10-game winner on the 18th of June as the Yankees beat the Tigers in Detroit. Suppose that's him? Don't know who else would be out this early. For the Caldwells, early morning's the best time to get things done. And, times being what they are, not much would make them shut down, even for a few minutes. But this summer of 1984, the Caldwells have shut down to see something they'll most likely never see again. the games this summer, let's hope we all learn that the true measure of the Olympics is not in the winning, but discovering the best in all of us. This is today's Chevrolet. Discover a space vehicle. A phone in my workshop. So I leased one from AT&T. You see, with a lease, there's just small monthly payments. If I ever have a problem, I just call AT&T toll-free or stop by one of their phone centers. From Tiger Stadium, where more than 40,000 watch, this ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Chevrolet. With the performance, the style, the innovation, the quality, and the value that make up today's Chevrolet. By Bud Light, the best has a taste all its own, satisfying but never filling. And by Gillette Actra Razor, the twin blade that pivots for a close comfortable shade. Al Michaels, Earl Weaver, Jim Palmer saying good night from Detroit where the Yankees beat the Tigers 2-1. to one. Stay tuned for ABC News Nightline tonight on Nightline with Ted Koppel, the world's first test tube orphans and the controversy surrounding them. What should be done with two frozen embryos whose would-be parents died immediately following your late local news. Travel arrangements made through and promotion will be paid by United Airlines. United flies to Tokyo for more top business centers with three-class Royal Pacific service. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Phil Necro, the big star tonight, this year, the Olympic tradition continues. Tuesday, a highbrow party delivers a new love and a low blow. Your husband knows about us, doesn't he? Hotel. Bam. A nightmare holds the key to a particular card. point of view. It is a question of life. Or is it? When does life really begin? And who has control over that life when it does begin? All brought up because of two frozen test two embryos and coal workers have made a final plea to save their jobs. The story for you in just a moment. Diana? Mayor Coleman Young says our cities are in trouble and pleads for help while local business people prepare for one of their greatest times of the year. Bill? Great day today, Jerry, with the weather. Yogi Berra said it, good pitching will beat good hitting 90% of the time, and vice versa, he said. Whatever, the Yankees beat the Tigers tonight 2-1. to one. Steve Gargiulo with all the sports, Diane Lewis, Bill Bonds, Channel 7's Action News Update is next. General Motors employees, the choice is yours. Isn't it time you saved more with a different dental program? Take a plunge with Jim Oaks tomorrow at 4. Good evening, everybody. Genetic engineering, tampering with nature, if you will. There is no easy answer to the question that is posed in this lead story tonight, but I suspect it was going to happen. A revolutionary experiment involving human life is giving birth to complicated legal and moral issues. Among them, when does life actually begin? And is life created in laboratory test tubes entitled to the same rights as life conceived in the normal biological way? Those are the heavy, unanswerable questions keeping the government of Australia probably awake tonight because the Australian government must decide the fate of two frozen embryos which have become orphans. Now, the Los Angeles couple who produced the embryos in an Australian laboratory have been killed in a plane crash. Mario and Elsa Rios left an estate which is now estimated to be worth as much as $7 million. 
The Australian government has no laws to deal with orphaned test tube babies and whether they or their near surrogate mothers can inherit multi-million dollar fortunes. The embryos were conceived in the state of Victoria, Australia. The state attorney general there claims the embryos must remain frozen until the lawmakers decide whether they are really alive and if they are, if they have any legal rights. But a right to life...